All right, hello guys, it's me, Clock, and we're playing 14 Days With You, by the way. 14 Days With You is an upcoming horror romance game made for those 18 and over, okay? I'm 18 and over. If you are not above the age of 18, chat, leave now, okay? And with that, let's get started. But not really, because I gotta mess with those settings. <laughs> okay. All right, YouTube, let me back. Let's start. Yeah, you some Yandir? Yandere? What name would you like to be called? Angel? No, this one's dedicated to chat. Don't you worry, chat. I got you this time, okay? You're in Haruko's DMs? I'm insane. We are not the same. Heart. They, them. 14 Days With You is still a demo. Consider supporting the, the creator on Tumblr, Twi Twitter, Tumblr, and Discord. I will leave the link to the description below, okay, for the video. Um, 18 plus scenes? Do you want to enable NSFW? Guys. Guys, I have to click no. Excuse me? Genitalia. Ambiguous. Both. Both? Pog? No. Yes? You a... You know this can't show up on YouTube, right? You know it can't show up on YouTube, right? I don't even think it's allowed on Twitch, okay? Like, it's it's probably not. It's probably not allowed. <laughs> hmm, we'll, we'll go ambiguous, I guess. Might want to go away now. Okay. <clears throat> Chat, I see. I can't wait to finally meet you, Angel. Wait, I named myself Chat. I did it for you, Chat, okay? His nickname is Angel for you, but you're still Chat, okay? <laughs> and in other news, the remaining the remains of yet another body has been pulled out from Lake Blue Moss, making it a total of four unidentifiable victims this past year. Authorities believe that... Ugh. Stifling a groan with the rim of my coffee cup, I fish around for the remote lodge between the cushions and turn off the TV. I wasn't about to let some morbid headline damper the start of my cheerful morning. Especially considering how today was going to be my first day at work after finally getting that hard-earned promotion. I had to suck a lot up. <clears throat> I mean, and work really hard. That's how you move up in the corporate ladder, guys. I mean, sure, stacking and sorting through books at a library might not have been my dream job, or even my first choice of places to work after moving back. But the pay was nice, my coworkers were friendly, and the building was located within the perfect walking distance from my apartment. Bro, you get a chance to work at a library? Dude, that's fucking sick. That's a government job? Good pay? Probably got healthcare? Motherfucker, don't complain about that. There's even this adorable little bakery along the way that served the best shortcakes and croissants known to mankind. And the manager there always loved to hand out small freebies whenever I stopped by. Still beats living in the city, though. Honestly, I wasn't even sure why I left my hometown in the first place. Fast-paced hustle and bustle lifestyle of the city just wasn't what I was longing for whenever I stared out of my window on sleepless nights. And the people there were always rude and indignant. There's nothing like Corland Bay, where everyone felt like a close-knit family. The air smelled like the sea, rather than pollution. And sure, the local crime rate might be getting out of hand as of late. There might be fewer things for me to do here. But my new job keeps me busy, and I prefer spending time alone at the beach over visiting shady bars with people I barely considered friends. In fact, you didn't need to go to the bars, bro. You... <laughs> what? Just because you lived in the city didn't mean you were forced to go clubbing, bro. Bzz, bzz. Setting my mug onto the table, I reach into my pocket and pull out my phone. A notification from Moth, my online friend, pops up, so I tap on the screen to read their message. Dude, reminds me of this, like, Australian person I know from Discord, and they're, like, messaging me about one of my gameplays at, like, fucking one in the morning, and I'm like, bruh. <laughs> bruh. <laughs> what greets me is an adorable sticker of some anime character giving a thumbs up, as well as a short message that says, Good luck today, underneath. I didn't even name name who it was. Moth had always been adamant about showing their endless support for me, even after five years of friendship, cursed memes, and shitty Wi-Fi video calls. 
and even though I would never admit it out loud, I was truly grateful to have someone like them in my life. Pulling up the keyboard, I begin to type a response to their message. How will you respond? Is this a save? What is the save? What? This? No? Download? Okay, it's extremely confusing. <laughs> the button system, okay? <clears throat> Australian respect. She's the only Australian. That's not true! Because there's two others, I believe. Okay? <laughs> Don't reply. Say thank you. Send back another sticker. Reply later. Send back with a meme with zero context. Um, we're a democracy chat. We choose. We'll choose. Because right now I'm saying don't reply and that's not even an option. Meme. Okay, I got one meme. Come on, chat. What are we saying? Someone's got to vote, man. Meme, meme. I got three for meme. For meme. We're going with meme. Thank you, chat. Thank you. Without missing a beat, I open up the image, image gallery with practiced fingers and send back a blurry picture of a worm and a bag of crisps with the word sexy written in glitter font. Not even five seconds pass before Moth quips back with a response of their own, this time sending their own cryptic meme of a frog sitting on a slice of bread. Is that... butter? What? Before I can ask, I wish they at least showed the pictures of the memes, man. That would've been great. Uh, before I can ask, a gray chat bubble pops up once more, indicating that Moth was still typing another message. By the way, did you see the latest AOG episode? I heard Haruko got an outfit change! Spoil it for me. Did he really change his hairstyle as well? <clears throat> Attack on Giants, or AOG as Moth liked to call it. Oh no. Attack on Titans at home. <laughs> was a popular anime series that we recently became obsessed with, and Haruko was the main character from the show. Damn. That sounds almost as good as Eren Yeager. <laughs> he was a sorcerer known for his shy and airheaded demeanor, and as of late, his hairstyle had become a trending topic within the community. <laughs> Low budget <laughs> attack on Titan. Now that I thought about it, what hairstyle did Haruko have in the latest episode? How will you respond? Um, does this matter? Like, Haruko's hair is short now, Haruko's hair is medium now. What does that mean? <laughs> Hi guys. Haruko's hair is long now. I haven't seen the latest episode yet. Walmart, dude. <laughs> uh, it's short now. Actually, no, he had... Spoilers, chat. His hair is long now. Yeah. He grew it out? I knew there was a one-year time skip, but dang! I'm bouncing off the walls right now, chat. By the way, I don't mean to change the subject, but... Didn't you say last night that you were gonna head to work at 8 a.m.? Because it's like almost 9.30 where you are right now. Right? Or am I just dumb and got the time zones mixed up again, lol? Looking at the time displayed on my phone, I immediately let out a string of curses and leapt to my feet. Shit! Grabbing the coat that I had carelessly strewn across the back of the sofa earlier, I quickly shrug it on before making a beeline towards the front door. Before I leave, however, I spare myself one final glance in the poorly hung mirror in the hallway. Hopefully, the outfit I chose was appropriate for my job. What style did you go for? I don't think this matters. Something cutesy, comfy, alternative? What is this mean what am i fucking arctic monkeys dude yes <clears throat> yes yes sorry chat that's you are dressed like a punk rocker okay full black too by the way that's the way to go maybe maybe you have a red plaid shirt on okay maybe okay so maybe my outfit might not match the vibes of the library oh fuck i forgot <laughs> ah no oh i forgot we worked at a library <laughs> but hey at least i'll look Hot while stacking those books. Adjusting the choker around my neck and readjusting the fishnet mesh. What did, what did I choose? What did, I give myself an appreciative nod in the mirror? Wait a second, did I just make chat my ideal female? Wait a sec. What? But enough of that. I can check out I can check myself out another time. Hastily, I smooth out the wrinkles and pick off any stray pieces of lint from my sleeves before I finally head out the front door. <laughs> We're goth. Never mind. Why didn't they just say goth, dude? I said alternative. I said alternative, okay? 
I thought that at most would be like ripped jeans. No, we got the fucking fishnet leggings on. We got a choker on in public. Almost catch my coat on the door, handling the process. Okay, just imagine clock. Okay, just imagine. And he al already has cat ears, man. <clears throat> with a grumble, I tug at the fabric of my coat before slamming the door shut with a little bit too much force than necessary. Even trying to insert my key came with a bit of a struggle. I had to fight the urge to yell in frustration as I attempted to lock my door. Rah! Seriously? When will that lazy bum of a landlord do something about this? I swear I've complained about this at least four times this month. Violet. Oh, hey there, chat. Looking good. Yeah, you like the fishnets? Appreciate that. My neighbor, Violet, practically beams at me while she fishes through her pockets for her own apartment key. She heard me. Rah! Resting on her hip was yet another potted plant, and I found myself wondering where she was going to put it this time. I was almost entirely convinced that her whole apartment had been turned into a greenhouse at this point, considering how her balcony was practically filled to the brim with different kinds of plants, greenery, and other various kinds of flora. That sounds awesome. What the fuck? Dude, I love that shit. But I wasn't about to complain or anything. The fragrance that wafted in with the wind always smelled floral and earthy. It did well to mask the smell of smoke and burnt food whenever I tried to cook. Chat, why are you always such a terrible fucking cook in every game we play, chat? Chat, I'm gonna make you dinner one day, okay, chat? I'm gonna show you how to cook dinner. I'm gonna show you how to cook one day, chat, okay? Love the shoes, by the way. Her voice pulls me away from my thoughts, and I notice how the growing smile on her face doesn't seem to falter. I bet you right now we're, we've got the, uh, what are they called? Oh, what are they called? The, the big booties? The big boots? The Doc Martens. Yeah, we got the Doc Martens. In response, I shoot her one of my own. It was apparently enough to brighten her mood even more than it already was. How will you respond? What exactly are you holding? Is that another plant? It's nice to see you again. Sorry, V. I'm in a rush. Vi? Like from League. What are we choosing, chat? Are you gonna be nice? Are you gonna be mean? Kern burnt a grilled cheese? That's fucked up. Do you like semen or master baiters? That's the same goddamn thing, I think. Don't I can't stay long in stream. Hey, no worries, dude. Thanks, Red, for popping in. Have a good one. Good luck on your studying, okay, brother? <clears throat> be mean? Yeah. I'm in a rush. I guess that's, like, the mean one. Or is that another plant? Chat, you gotta pick. This is you. You decide who you're gonna riz up, okay, chat? You decide. I had a literal three-minute ad. I don't give a shit! We're being mean. Someone said mean. I guess we'll say, is that another plant? Three or four? I've seen four. <laughs> another plant. Four, two... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go with, uh... I'm gonna go with four. That's okay. Don't let me stop you. She gives me a soft smile and waves her free hand before focusing her attention back on the door. That is, until she suddenly jolts as if she just remembered something and swivels on her heels to look at me once more. Oh, I almost forgot. I've been meaning to ask you this, but... When were you gonna tell me that you were seeing someone? Huh? Nani? Chat? Seeing someone? <laughs> Nah, my chat? Nah, 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 sorry. <laughs> sorry, chat. <laughs> oh, that was a good joke, Vi. Thanks. A knowing look pulls at her features as Violet continues to fiddle with the lock on her door. What are you Nani? talking about? <laughs> Come on, don't act like you didn't just have a guy over last night. I saw him leaving when I took Kathy out for a walk. I'd be more worried about my neighbor taking her plants, named plants, out on a walk at night. Wait, excuse me? <laughs> it's good for the plants to get some fresh air. But the thought of someone leaving my apartment seemed to set off way more alarm bells. I give Violet a concerned look, and she look picks up on it almost immediately. You don't remember? Don't tell me you were junk or something. With a huff, she gives up on trying to unlock her door. Seems as though we both shared the same problem with our apartment locks, and places her potted plant on the ground before slowly making her way towards me. Tall guy? Wearing a dark slasher hoodie? Probably into either alt fashion or bondage with the crazy amount of belts and loops wrapped around his leg. <laughs> wait a second. Wait, wait a second. A badass? 
ring any bells? Uh, no. Last time I was just catching up on some TV shows and talking with my friend. No one came here. Even if they did, I would have heard them. The place isn't really that big anyway. Really? But I was so sure it was your door. A hand rests on her cheek in a thinking manner before she pounced up at me, seemingly giving in. For now. Hmm. Well, alright then. Maybe it was someone else's apartment? I mean, it's always so dark in these hallways at night, honestly. What is our landlord doing? He is taking your money and living for free, okay? That's what he's doing. <laughs> Wouldn't you mind if I check in with security downstairs later? Give me some peace of mind. Yeah, that's fine. Alright then, thank you, chat. Well, I got some plants to water and some MMOs to raid in, so... Oh my god, Violet? Are you the one? Green flags everywhere? Wait a second. What? Violet lets out one last huff before she picks up her plant and what she did what did she name this one again and goes back to unlocking her door. Good talk, I guess. Even if it was kind of awkward, hee <laughs> hee. Hmm. Uh yeah, sure. See you later, Vi. Slipping past my neighbor and into the cramped hallway, I quickly make for the stairs. When will they fix that broken elevator and break into a slight jog? Dude! Report this landlord, dude! Report! Okay, report this landlord to the labor board, please! Oh my lord. He cannot get away with that, man. He cannot get away with this. Honestly, this Yandere boyfriend better be fucking hot. Because she's winning. She is winning me over right now. Thankfully, the weather was cool today, and the shoes I chose weren't going to leave me with blisters by the time I reached the library. <laughs> She's the landlord. She's funding her plants and MMO's addictions with all the rent. The smell of old paper, coffee, and soft incense floods my senses as I step through the library's glass doors. The melodic chimes alert the woman at the reception desk of my arrival, and I watch as she tucks a strand of stray blonde hair behind her ear as she turns around to greet me. Yo! Is everyone trying to riz up chat right now? Good morning, Eleanor. No, oh my god! Yo, Eleanor! Oh. She looks surprised for some reason before her expression morphs into a soft smile. She beckons me closer with a nod of her head. Yo, Eleanor's got some goods, okay? I'm sorry. How hot is this guy? Dude! Eleanor is one of my co-workers here at Corlin Bay Library, one of the very few people who actually get the work done. We got some poggies, okay? She got some poggies. And although she's notorious for being rather scatterbrained, she more than makes up for it with her caring and doting attitude towards everyone. But her nurturing personality can get rather overbearing at times, and I often find myself having to step away to get some breathing room. Nevertheless, she's charming to work with, and I appreciate her always looking out for me. After all, who knows what my sleeping schedule would look would have looked like without her help. Dude, we we are contrasted heavily. We're like standing right in front of her, full black, fucking fishnet leggings. We've got a choker on, and she's just here with like her like angel outfit. Oh, she's got a necklace. I I want to say it's a choker though. <laughs> Chat. Just on time. I printed out your... Wait, where did I... Her expression turns into a slight panic as she spins on her heels. And I silently watch with amusement as she shuffles dirt through the various books and stacks of papers lining her desk. Where did I leave it? Ah, here it is. Spinning around once more, Eleanor comes back and hands me a sheet of paper with the word SCHEDULE printed in big, bold letters. I take it from her grasp and give her the sheet once over. Well, it looks like I'm going to be busy for the next few weeks, but I guess Eleanor doesn't seem to share the same disdain as me, judging from the playful look plastered on her face. So, how does it feel to no longer be the one in charge of stacking books all day long? Although, you'll still have to find the work- you'll still have to work the front desk from time to time, though, unfortunately. I offer a weak smile as her words begin before rounding the corner and placing my bag under the desk. As I begin to pull out some of my belongings, the front door chimes again, letting everyone know that another patron has come in. Dude, you work in a library. How much work is there to do aside from putting away books and working the front desk? What do you do? Oh, sorry. We also read to children every week. <laughs> Story time at the library, you know? Figuring out- <laughs> I don't think- Actually, never mind. I don't think you want the- <laughs> I don't think you want the dude wearing fishnet leggings and a choker to be reading to kids. <laughs> I'm gonna- They're gonna call the- Parents gonna call the cops on me, man. 
Figuring Eleanor has it all covered, I leave the customer to her as I go back to preparing everything for the day. But as I turn around to check on her, I notice that she had already finished greeting the customer and was on her way back to her own desk across from mine. <laughs> as if sensing my gaze, she spins around in her office chair and flashes me with a teasing grin. That is not the word I would use for Eleanor. I would never say Eleanor flashes me, okay? Chat? <laughs> <laughs> Even if it's flashes me with a grin, man. That just sounds like she just raised and just poggies me. IRL, okay? I wouldn't mind, but still. Looks like he's back again. Eleanor gives a soft chuckle as she inclines her head in the direction of the person she was talking about. You know, that new guy? I don't know when he started showing up here in the bay, but he always comes in and rents out the books you recommend on the display window. And if I didn't know any better, I'd say he has a little crush on you. Twink time? Maybe. Maybe, chat. Especially with that outfit you've got on. You look amazing, so I can't really fault him for staring. Thanks, I really tried with the fishnets. Because he was staring. A lot. <laughs> uh... Not creepy. Snorting. I push Eleanor's office chair so that she's facing the other way. Focus my attention back to the papers in front of me. What was with everyone today? I was smiling, gossiping about other people, and meddling in business that wasn't their own. It was bad enough that I had to deal with a potential intruder, but I doubt my deadbeat landlord was going to do anything about it. I need to buy a stronger lock on my way home from work. Maybe even some, even some kind of alarm system. Would the stores still be open by then? All of a sudden, I get pulled backwards as Eleanor playfully wheels my chair around and leans over my shoulder to softly speak into my ear. <laughs> Would you look at that? Lover boy in aisle 8 needs some help, it seems. She nods in the direction of the red light flashing above the bookshelves, signaling to the staff that someone in that row needed assistance. What? Dude, how advanced? Is my fucking library, dude. We're putting some taxes into this shit. Good. Yo, Music Girl 2023. Hello. With a sigh, I reluctantly stand up and make my way over. I already knew for a fact that Eleanor wasn't going to go help them, them herself, so I begrudgingly begin to make my way towards Isle 8 alone. I knew better than to glance back at her, though, knowing fully well that my teasing coworker would be sporting the biggest grin on her face at my misfortune. Hmm. <clears throat> Musica. Ducking around the corner and into the aisle, I was immediately met with a broad backside. Like a like a butt? That was covered by what had to be the comfiest looking cardigan I'd ever seen. Okay, good, just his back. The person whom it belonged to, however, hadn't seemed to notice me yet, so I awkwardly clear my throat and absent mindedly shift my weight from one foot to the other. <clears throat> Ahem. <clears throat> We need a redeemable audio that is you just shouting Poggy's clock. <laughs> no, I don't I don't think that's I don't think I don't think chat needs me yelling Poggy's. Bum name clerk, hello. Ah. It seems sorry. Ah! Ah! <laughs> there we go, that's better. It seems to jump at the sudden noise before sheepishly turning around to face me. Immediately, I was taken aback by a soft demeanor. Doe-like eyes and imposing height. So this was the guy who always rented out my recommended books on the display window, huh? He definitely fits the aesthetic of a cozy literature lover needing a good book. Yo, he's got a neck tattoo. Bro's got a turtleneck with a cardigan on top. And chat's going nuts right now. I, I, I don't even know if this is the psycho femboy yet. His pink hair also reminded me of Haruko, an anime character I had recently been obsessing over with Moth during our late night video calls. In fact, even the overall overall cut and style appeared vaguely similar to his. I was gonna say that. I I said for Haruko to have long hair, because Eren has long hair after the time skip. But then again, this hairstyle could have been trending right now or something, and I just so happened to be the last to know about it. But now that I really had a good look at the man, which proved di difficult considering his towering height, this stranger also seemed to bear a near picture-perfect resemblance to the main lead from this webtoon I was reading. It was called Always With You, and it revolved around the main character meeting the love of their life at a library, where they both... 
I, chat, you're thinking too much. As if noticing my spaced out look, the stranger absentmindedly scratches at his jaw while he waits for me to snap out of my thoughts. Dude, he's got painted black nails. Daniel? In fact, I had been so distracted that I didn't even realize that he had been muttering quietly to himself. Whoa, you look. But I thought you preferred softer clothing. That's why I... Ahem. <clears throat> um, so sorry. I hope I'm not bothering you. I was just looking for, uh... His voice pulls back to the present, and I hastily try to make sense of what was spilling from his cherry-tinted lips. <clears throat> Excuse me, chat? How horny are you? Already. Watching him struggle with his words would have made anyone feel bad, so I offer him a reassuring smile in return and an encouraging nod of my head. At that, he takes a steady inhale of air before trying again. I need some help. I I'm looking for a specific book, you see, but... And now he's playing with the ends of his sleeves. I felt the urge, sudden urge to reach out and stop him. Did I find the action annoying, endearing, relatable? Who knows? But instead, I held back and waited for him to find the words to speak. But wow, even his mannerisms were eerily similar to Haruko's. The endearing awkwardness and sleeve tugging gave me a sense of deja vu. It honestly felt like he walked straight out of the anime into this very library. Man. Moth is gonna freak when I tell them about this later. The stranger in front of me takes another shaky inhale before he tries to speak once more, this time with a lot more confidence in his tone and a fire in his eye. Well, he could just be a big fan of the anime, too. They even said it was popular. Uh, <clears throat> Do you have any books on native flora? The best I've found are on generic wildlife, but nothing about Corland Bay's plants. Or maybe I'm just in the wrong aisle? He's looking for a book about the native flora? Perhaps I should introduce him to Violet. Chuckling to myself at the thought, I stepped closer to the tall man and began scanning the contents of the shelf beside him. He almost seems to flinch at the sudden closeness between us, but showed no signs of moving away. In fact, he seemed to almost lean closer and incline his head towards mine. A Ayo, bro? Bro, can you step back? And had I not been too preoccupied with finding that book, I would have noticed how his breath hitches in his throat as my scent floods his senses. No, you're definitely in the right aisle. Those kinds of books are just more hidden, I guess. I step past him this time. Thanks for breaking the tension. Make my way over to the lower part of the shelves. Absentmindedly, I run a finger against the spines of each book until I come into contact with one book in particular. Dude, do, are his eyes, are his pupils hearts? I can barely see it. Then bending over slightly, I pull the book from the shelf and give the cover a once-over before offering it to the man behind me. You know that when you bent over, chat, he was staring. He was, he was looking disrespectfully at you, okay? Is this what you're looking for? Too preoccupied with the misplaced book in the bookshelf, he brings cookbooks to the nature aisle? I barely notice how his blue eyes hungrily trail across from my form before landing on the book held out of my outstretched hand. With shaky fingers, he reaches out and takes it from me. I watch as he flips through, the, through a few pages to take in some information before finally settling on the book with an affirmative nod. Y yes this was exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm doing my job. Haha, <laughs> you're like an angel sent down from heaven or something. You're so helpful, kind too. What? What? Oh, uh, I didn't... Did I say that out loud? I didn't mean to. Ugh, that must have been so weird. I'm so sorry. He looked as though he was about to cry now, so I hastily threw up my hands in a comforting manner and shot him a reassuring smile. Hey, it's fine. No need to freak out. I just... I wasn't expecting someone to say that about me is all. <laughs> I'm literally doing the bare minimum for you, chat, for your job, okay? Excuse me, did someone already ask him to get naked in my chat? Excuse me? Never hydrate? I'm gonna hydrate right now, actually. Everybody, make sure you got a drink, okay? Ugh. Really? Well, I think it's true for what it's worth. You really are like an angel. Um, thanks. Figuring that was my cue to leave before things got awkward, I give him one last friendly smile and subtly glance back towards the front desk. But the eccentric man showed no signs of moving. Instead, he just looked down at me, expectantly. Yo, we ain't... You gotta take me out to dinner before we do anything, okay? Did you want to continue the conversation? It seemed unlikely as he didn't say anything. He simply stared at me. Hmm. 
Awkwardly, I clear my throat for what is to be the millionth time today and gesture vaguely to the reception desk behind me. Well, if you don't need any more help, I should... <gasps> this is just getting weird now. Should I even attempt to continue this conversation or just leave? I mean, it would seem rude to just walk away abruptly, especially considering how he's apparently a regular patron in the library I worked at, but he wasn't making much of an effort either, so what should I do? Alright, chat. Alright. What are you going to do, chat? Do you want to keep talking to the femboy? Do you just want to stare at him? Uh, do you want to politely excuse yourself and leave, or lie and end the conversation? We got one for leave. <laughs> what is this myth of stare? <laughs> the emoji for stare. <laughs> stare back. <laughs> is that the face you're making, chat? <laughs> <laughs> Look disrespectfully. <laughs> stare a hundred percent. Okay, I, I guess we have to stare. Wait, it's so good the stare. Even. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Wait, chat. That's you right there. That's you, chat. <laughs> yeah, the, that's chat right now. Looking back in a choker. This is chat. Okay. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> ah? Dot dot dot. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, you shouldn't stare at me like that. Especially when it's with a stranger you don't know. Motherfucker, you're staring at chat. Just because chat's super creepy about it doesn't mean you can say that, okay? Actually, now that I think about it, you haven't told me your name yet. Oh, <laughs> guess you're right. You can call me Redacted! What? What? It was like he said something, but his voice was delayed. Was that even his voice? Was he speaking English? It almost felt like something that came out of a dream. How did you do that? Do what? Anyways, you can just call me Ren if you like. Is it alright if I call you Chat? Although, Angel does suit you just as well, in my personal opinion at least. <laughs> Seriously, what the hell just happened? Was I just imagining things? And was he really flirting with me right now? <laughs> Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I, I think, but... I'm smelling burnt toast right now? Chat? Are you okay? Like, how did you know my name? I don't remember telling you, name badge. Silly, it's on your name tag. As if to prove a point, Ren reaches out to gently flick the name tag that I somehow forgot that I had to put on this morning. Oh. Chat is a cute name, though. It's really, really, really fun to say. Especially over and over again. Right? Anyways. Say, are you busy later? I'd love to thank you for helping me find this book. Seriously, what was up with this guy? One minute he's shy and the next he's bold. It's almost like he was putting up several fronts to see which one I responded to better. Actually, I'll be busy this afternoon. I need to buy a new lock for my apartment. A new lock? That doesn't sound good. Can I ask why? Oh, our landlord's a piece of shit. I guess it wouldn't hurt to tell him. I mean, what was he gonna do? Personally show up at my doorstep and test the new lock himself? Apparently someone broke into my apartment last night and I didn't notice. I don't think they stole anything, but still, it's creepy. Scary. This is the right thing to do, by the way. If someone ever tells you someone broke in your house, then you should buy a new lock, like, right away. Figured it's better to be safe than sorry, you know? <laughs> yeah, but it, it sounds like instead of a lock, you just, need a, you just need to jump the scumbag when they least expect it and beat him up to teach them a lesson. Excuse me? What are you, Naruto? Are you Luffy? Are you a shonen protagonist now? W what? Stay up all night if you have to. Really get the edge on them. Get a knife, too. Psycho killer over here. I couldn't help but let out a genuine chuckle at his suggestion. If I had to choose, then this would have been the side of him that I preferred. He seemed at ease, and his words weren't as forced or awkward. Yeah, and who's going to be the one to beat the guy up at 3am? Because last I checked, I'm not really the type to go around throwing punches at people I don't know. And definitely not before the sun is up and shining. I could do it for you. Ooh-woo. Yeah, you. 
but I mean, we don't even know each other that well, and that's fine. I could tell you all about myself on the walk there. My whole life story and everything. Where I was born, the school I went to, how many cute librarians I've met. Oh, wait, excuse me? Wait a second, double? Which happens to be one so far. Nice save, brother. You need to work on your riz, okay? Don't tell me you're a womanizer already. <laughs> He's actually just a psycho killer and his, uh, his like, murder victims are always librarians that wear fishnets and, uh, chokers. Before I could even comment on his sudden confidence, Ren seems to be- seemed to pick up on my discomfort at his choice of words. If it even was discomfort that I was feeling, and hastily backtracks. H hey, or- or not, I was just messing around. I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. There was again, the subtle shift in his personality. But, now that he mentioned it, would it really hurt to invite him to my place for the night? Yeah, yes Chat? Yes? You literally just met this man, dude! And his first suggestion? At a problem was to beat the ever living shit out of someone. That's that's a that's a red flag, okay? That's a red flag, okay? Chat. He definitely looked like he could handle himself in a fu <laughs> His contrasting outfit aside, so maybe it wasn't so bad of an idea. You telling me this guy is gonna? Dude, the the robber is gonna beat him up. Bruh. <laughs> the robber is gonna pull his hair off, dude. I mean, I guess they said he was big. He's got some tattoos down there, so. Yo, I can handle myself. I, I was literally a boxer, okay? can handle myself. How will you respond, chat? How will you respond? Chat, what do you want to do? Chat, I'm letting you decide. Do you want to bring him over, or do you want to say no? My advice, chat, is... Maybe don't bring the boyfriend... Maybe, maybe let him take you out to dinner before you take him home to fuck, okay? That's my advice, chat. <clears throat> Get this guy out of here. Ginger's smart with it. Invite him over anyway. Invote him. Invite. Stare. Don't. Don't just no. I say no. No sex before marriage. Invite. Show him your figure collection. <laughs> True. Dude. Show him my sick God of War hammer. My Thor's hammer. I'll show him my fucking... My Final Fantasy VIII gunblade. Hell yeah, dude. Leave him. Don't do it. Okay, everyone's... I, I think the majority vote is don't invite him over, okay? Yeah, go fuck yourself, dude. Sorry, I just don't know you well enough for that. No, no, I totally get it. I don't know why I suggested that in the first place. Heart. Great. Now it's back to being awkward again. Well... Anyways, where are they? Chat? Ah. There you are! Someone at the front desk is looking for you and- Oh, sorry, are you busy right now? I can- Impeccable timing as always, Eleanor. Look at how upset he got. He's like, damn bitch! <laughs> He's pissed, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. I think everything else is already handled here, right? Give the two of them a soft smile before making my way towards the reception desk. But as I pass by Eleanor, I gently clasp a hand on her shoulder and shoot her a playful look of my own. If you need more help, I'm sure Eleanor here can assist you. She loves helping others, right? He's pissed, dude. As I turn to leave, I barely miss the way Ren's eyes zone in on my hand resting on Eleanor's shoulder. He's pissed. He's pissed that I'm by. He knows. Hours seem to pass by in a blur, and soon enough, I find myself resting up in the employee's lounge. My mind drifts back to the guy from earlier, and I couldn't help but wonder what happened to him afterwards. Did he rent out the book I offered? What about my recommended novel of the week? Ren surely was strange, to say the least, but I had to admit that he did seem kind of cute with his oversized cardigan and timid demeanor. <laughs> he still gave me off-putting vibes, though, especially with his ever-changing personality. If I had to be completely honest, that shy and timid persona that he displayed felt rather forced to me. Yeah. He's hiding... So he's hiding some... He's hiding some manly vibes underneath that fake ass... Ooh, ooh. It was almost as if he saw it on TV or something and wanted to try it out himself. And I just happened to be one of his first victims. But who was I to call him out for it? That was his business, if he wanted to act all shy and demure. Demure? 
<laughs> Hello? Conan! Oh my god, Conan O'Brien already? Chat? Everything alright? It's not often I find you here in this time. Conan, my boss, startles me as he suddenly appears in the entrance way. Entrance way. He's got a little scar on his lips, dude. Everyone saw him as some kind of blessing to this institution, because the moment he showed up, all forms of trouble seemed to disappear overnight. Those low-life teens started causing chaos elsewhere, and the rumored gangs became few and far between. Wait a second, he's, he's literally beating up gang members, dude. At first, I thought he might have been linked with these criminals because of his intimidating gaze and facial scars, but then I got to know him better and found out that he had a massive soft spot for those dear to him. Though... Much like Eleanor, Conan felt mu more like a father figure with how much he fretted over his staff and their well-being. Ah, daddy. I mean, he literally installed a new air conditioner and water dispenser last week because one of his employees fainted due to heat stroke. I mean, that just sounds like a good manager, right? <clears throat> it wasn't anything too major, but it was nice to know that our boss was considerate enough about the people he hired. Dad, I could say the same about my old job in the city. True. Conan was also nice to chat to whenever I went on my breaks, would always encourage me to take as much time as I needed before I returned to my desk. But after realizing that I had once again been spacing out, I pulled myself away from my thoughts and returned to offer my boss an acknowledging smile. Yeah, I'm fine. Just taking a short break. I'll be out I'll be back out there soon. Take as long as you need. Don't overwork yourself. He seems hesitant to leave. If the way he was shifting was from one foot to the other was any indication, he shoots me a concerned look before opening his mouth, only to close it once more in contemplation. Have you seen Eleanor? I asked her to come see me regarding the unsorted novels in the storeroom, but she's yet to show up. Eleanor? Last I saw her, she was talking to one of our patrons in aisle 8. Maybe she's still there. Hmm. I'll have to check again then. Thank you. And with that, he disappeared just as quietly as he came. But that was odd. It wasn't like Eleanor to suddenly go missing. Was she still occupied with Ren? It'd been a while, so I figured she'd, she would have finished helping him and left by now. I don't think we'll be seeing Eleanor anymore. No! <laughs> no, dude, not the big titty librarian, dude. I just... <laughs> that was my salvation, dude. Come on, man. What the fuck? Oh, well. I'm sure she'll turn up sooner or later. Ren didn't seem much like a talkative person anyways. No, he didn't. Jeez, why do my thoughts keep returning to that eccentric man? Dude, Eleanor's gone. Deciding that I wasn't going to waste my time thinking about any more pink-haired guys, my beloved Haruko aside, I got up from the lounge and meandered my way back towards the front desk again. But once I arrived, I immediately noticed that my chatty coworker was still nowhere to be found. It was just like my boss had said, Eleanor wasn't anywhere to be seen, and it wasn't like her to leave the reception desk unattended for so long. Wow. Maybe she managed to knock over a pile of books before books again and was busy cleaning it up? It certainly wouldn't be anything out of the ordinary for her. <laughs> Kidnapped, murdered, something. Well, whatever, I'm sure she'll turn up soon again. Again soon. The impact for me plopping down in my office chair causes some of the papers around me to rustle, and a bright, pink sticky note fluttering around captures my attention. Assuming it was left here by Eleanor, I peel the folded note off my computer screen and read it. You can throw this away if you want. <laughs> Alright. Unfolding it, it read the following, okay. XX, triple X, triple X, triple X. That's a lot of kisses. That stuttering guy from aisle 8, heart. <laughs> Did Ren leave this note? And was that his number? I had to admit, he was really was a persistent fellow. Bro, dude, not... Bro has the worst Riz I have seen, dude. Before I could allow Eleanor the chance to manifest behind me and to tease me to kingdom come, I pocket the note and go back to sorting through the stack of returned books left on the desk. Bruh, it's his phone number? Are you sure he wasn't just sending a lot of hearts and kisses? Sorry, hydrating. Okay. That's <laughs> definitely his number. No way, Chad. He would never. He can't be that cringe. Well, walking home from work, I couldn't shake off the feeling of someone watching me from behind. Yet every time I turned around, no one was there. I felt like a pair of eyes were on me, watching my every move. Which was strange, considering how I never noticed this when I first started walking to and from my workplace. 
Maybe I was just imagining things. Maybe I was just too tired. Rolling my eyes at my own paranoia. I continue on my walk, but I didn't I didn't make it that far before. Chat! Hey yo! <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. What is What are you wearing, brother? What are you wearing, bro? What is that, dude? What is that? No. You are not wearing a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> no. Nah, I'm 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 dead. Uh, I could rec recognize those boisterous voices anywhere. The first one belonged to Jae Hyun. Jae Hyun? Hyun? Sorry, I'm butchering names. It's gonna happen. A guy I'd met during my early days at university. Sat next to me during the first few days of orientation. And even offered to lend me his phone charger when my battery started to run out. He was a fun guy to be around. Though his extroverted and energetic personality was often hard to keep up with. But Leon, the other guy, awkwardly hanging off of Jay's arm was a different story. In fact, we've known each other since we were babies, but he moved away from Corland Bay when we were still in elementary school. I wasn't sure when he moved back to the bay, but it was great knowing I'd be able to see him again. I just wish I could find the time to hang out with him just like we used to, but I was always busy with work, and he was always busy playing volleyball and taking care of his sick mother in the hospital and vacationing at Hawaii for some reason. <laughs> Before I knew it, I was being pulled out of my thoughts by Jay's bubbly laughter. Hey, hey, still with us? Hey, chat. Finally finished with work? We were just about to head over to Club Shoreline. Do you want to come? I'm sure Leon wouldn't mind paying for you as well. Damn! Oi, I don't mind paying for them, but who said anything about paying for you? I did, just now. Thanks, Leon. You're the best. I don't miss the way Leon rolls his eyes at Jay's antics before settling his gaze on me once more. Do you want to tang along? I really don't mind paying if you do. Sorry guys, as much as I'd love to, I'm kind of drained from work. Maybe another time though. Hey, no worries, doll. Darl? Just make sure you take it easy when you get back home, yeah? Is he Australian or something? What's going on here? Shoots me a considerate smile before throwing an arm over Jay's shoulder. Well then, if you'll excuse us, I gotta find a way to get this knucklehead to cover his own entry, entry, entry fees. We can all catch up another time, okay? They just sprinted away from me. Zoom! <laughs> OMG Darl. <laughs> he looks like a Tokyo Revengers character. <laughs> That's some disrespect. That is some disrespect. <laughs> I watch as they both throw a carefree wave over their shoulders as they both head off in the direction of the nightclub a few blocks down the street. It was nice to see them again, especially since I had been so occupied with moving back home and settling in. It didn't feel like that long, but two months was a long time, and I somehow couldn't find a single chance to hang out with either of them yet. Oh well, there's always next time. Putting those thoughts to rest, I start making my way back home once more. Okay, we're home. Back at home, the sounds of my microwave meal and television filled the silence as I told Moth about my day. Like always, their webcam is pointed towards the ceiling with only half of their face in the frame, but I knew it was probably because they hadn't cleaned their room in a while. <laughs> at that point, at the thought, I glanced towards my growing pile of laundry in my basket, made a mental note to take care of it on my next day off. But now that I was looking at it, when did I leave it looking so messy? And since when did I put my underwear on top? Hello? Earth to chat. You good? Hmm? Sorry, what were you talking about? I was asking about that dude from earlier. Like, I seriously can't believe he gave you his number. Yeah, I'm surprised too. He's sniffing your underwear! No! No! Don't say that, dude! Oh, no! God, not another weird stalker, dude! Oh, God! Uh, no! Nah, dude. Nah, I'm upset. <sighs> yeah, no shit. My guy literally couldn't even stutter out a complete sentence. Yet he was able to shoot his shot like that? Damn, maybe his... Maybe his dick really is big? Excuse me? Oh my god, Moth! What? I'm just saying. But you let me know, right? If his dick is big. <laughs> I'm hanging up on you. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. But for real though, did you text him back yet? Excuse me? Excuse me, Moth? What the fuck? Er, no. I thought you were supposed to make them wait a day or something. I don't want to seem too eager. So you're saying you're eager? Ahem. <clears throat> Attention, everyone. They're eager as hell. And for a guy who doesn't even know how to grow a backbone. 
Oh my god, I'm not saying anything. But your neighbors will if you keep shouting like that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Look, if it were me, I'd text him back as soon as possible. Maybe even give him a call instead if his voice was as submissive and breedable as you said it was. Oh, Chad, what am I playing, dude? <laughs> what am I playing, Chad? I literally never said that. <laughs> if that's what you want to believe. <laughs> Power bottom. <laughs> Yo, Shy Kitsune, th thank you for the sub. Appreciate it, okay? <sighs> Damn it, their laughter was contagious. <laughs> Why are you still talking to me anyway? Go call up your precious little Haruko 2.0. I've got some webtoons I need to catch up on anyway. Oh, speaking of webtoons, did you read the latest chapter of Always What? Alright, I'm hanging up now. See ya, chat! With a sigh, I watched the green call button turn red. Moth had always been terrible towards my impulse control, but I adored them either way. Sounds like a good friend. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Ren is a top? I, I don't know. He's pretty submissive. And breedable, apparently. <laughs> uh, spinning around in my chair, I glanced over at my phone, charging on the nightstand, and decided to listen to Moth's words after all. Plopping onto my bed, I scoop my phone up and unlock it. I navigate the messages, e at messages app easily and open up a new contact to enter Ren's details. <laughs> Ren is getting the peg. Yes. Moments seemed to pass as I blankly stared at his number on the screen. Before I could let myself stall any longer, I finally decide what I should do. How will you respond? Okay, chat. What are you gonna do, chat? What are we doing? Come on, hit me with it. I'm gonna drink some Gatorade. You gonna send him a text? You gonna call him? Wait till tomorrow or block him? I got one for block his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Block. <laughs> Holy shit, I love how many people said block. Wow, wait, wait a minute. Chat is smart. Send noodles. Block that bitch. Block him, block, okay, block so he goes berserk, block, block, block him for no reason at all. Okay, chat has decided. YouTube will come back to this. <laughs> Just game over the game right now. <laughs> yeah, let's block him. Still, sitting in the contacts app, my finger hovers over the block button before I finally decide to press it. Why did I even add him? <laughs> While Rent ultimately seemed harmless, his odd and timid behavior rubbed me off the wrong way. Plus, I wasn't entirely sure, entirely convinced that he wasn't the same person Violet saw last night. Sure, their appearances didn't match up at all, but it never hurt to be a little cautious. Climb into bed with the thought of the supposed intruder still heavy on my mind, but I eventually put it to rest by remembering the heavy-duty lock I bought and installed earlier. There's no way anyone could break in now, and even if they did, I could rely on my neighbors to hear. Often, I'd hear Violet gaming away on her computer until the early hours of the morning, so I felt safe knowing that she'd be around if something went wrong. That's how thin your walls are? You literally hear your neighbor gaming? MMO gaming? That's badass, by the way. Violet is the green flag we all need in our lives. <laughs> Even if I couldn't hear her right now. Oh well, I'm sure everyone takes gaming breaks every so often. She's not okay, and you should call the cops right now. Chat, please. Please, chat, please! Snuggly deeper into the warmth of my blankets, my eyes begin to feel heavy as I slowly lulled myself into dreamland. Because of this, I failed to notice the sounds of soft footsteps creeping down the hallway. Error, error, 101 woman 0 0 one one zero 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 one one zero zero zero. Error, error, era, un, un, uno? Uno? <clears throat> there we go. Don't worry, chat. I won't let you get my bad ending. So don't hide from me. Why are you hiding from me? I won't hurt you, so don't be scared. Don't you realize that we're meant to be together? I love you, chat. I love you so much. Excuse me? <laughs> no! <laughs> no, he licked his fingers! Ah! <laughs> Wait, that was actually a game over. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. He just licked us. He went... 
Oh, what the fuck? Haruka? Ren? Dude, you just game over me. I can see you. Oh, oh, oh my god. Wait a second. Dude, that is awesome. Morning, no entry. I can see you. Oh, he's cleaning up the blood. Oh my god. Wait a second. That's... This is fucking good. Okay. All right. Bad ending. We were the bottom. I don't think that's what happened. I guess we're going back. What happens? Again? Chat. Why are you doing this? You're not gonna find anything here. It's just me. Nothing else exists here. I knew it was fucking different. I fucking knew it. Why don't you just play the game normally? That way, neither of us will have to be stuck in this dark void. I love being with you, watching you interact with everything. Everything is so bright and colorful when you're around. Will you let me out? Please, let me out. It's no fun here. I want to be with you. I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Ha! <laughs> Yo, Monica? Is that you? Wait a second. One more time. Ugh. Wait a second. One more time. Let me just... I can see you. Hee <laughs> One more time. I just want to see what'll happen one more time, okay? Then we'll pick the... Again? Chat, why are you doing this? Oh, okay. Never mind, it's just the same. Ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> All right. All right, chat. Um... Hmm. Hmm. It would have been great. He's just whacking off when you move the mouse. Oh, no, dude. Oh, no. Call him this time. We'll call him this time. Send him a text or call him. Or wait, we'll call. We'll call him. Deciding to give Ren a call instead, I tap on his contact info and press the green button without a second thought. Silently hoping that he'd still be awake at this time, I bring my phone closer to my ear and listen to the dial tone. Excuse me? Excuse me? He just ran away because I heard his phone going off. That oh no, dude! Oh no! Oh no! It barely rings three times before he picks up and he seems almost flustered and out of breath. Oh no, dude, he was right outside. <laughs> he was in my Oh my god, he was in the neighbor's room! Oh my god, he was in the neighbor's room. Oh my god, dude. That's two kills confirmed. Yeah. Hello? This this is chat, right? Oh, dude, this is so fucked up. Oh my god. <laughs> They're literally <laughs> he had I don't think he had sex with the neighbor. I don't think that happened. I think Violet's uh <laughs> he fucked her first. <clears> hmm. <throat> um it is. Wait, did uh, did I save? Yeah, I did. I did. Okay, well, chat. What number four? Number one. What are we doing? Number one. I see two for number one. What else? What about now? We just get the sloppy seconds. Oh no. Number one. Okay, I'm seeing a lot. It is. Thanks for leaving your number. Oh, oh, oh yeah. No worries. <laughs> thanks for uh thanks for calling. Wow, your voice sounds just as lovely on the phone. Oh uh. Thank you. Wait, no, that's not what I... I didn't mean to... I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking when I said that. It's okay. Don't worry about it. He's really been apologizing a lot today. I almost feel bad for him. What is he, a Canadian? Actually, I'm surprised you called. I honestly expected you to throw away my note, to be honest. No, you didn't, you motherfucker. You actually murder me if I do that. Okay? Shut up. <laughs> Asshole. 
I hope you didn't find it creepy or anything. Your workmate seemed like the type to tease you if I handed it to her instead. So I figured that I'd le that leaving it on your desk w desktop would have been the wiser choice. <clears throat> but then I was worried she might come back and find it before you did. So I considered putting it in your bag instead, but then I thought... I guess I'm rambling now, aren't I? Sorry. Wait, no, he's me. Oh no, he's me. <laughs> Super apologetic. <laughs> Rambles. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> it's me. Uh, anyways, I also wanted to know if, well, if you were free tomorrow. I still wanted to thank you for helping me find that book. Hmm. Oh, was he asking me out on a date? Or was I reading too deep into his words? He must have taken my silence as confusion, however, as he immediately begins to backtrack on his words. Uh, I, I guess I'm asking you out on a date. <laughs> we could we could go visit the pier or the beach or this cafe I know. Honestly, we could do whatever you'd like. I don't mind at all. <laughs> well, so he wanted to go on a date. Well, it wasn't like I had anything planned for tomorrow. It was my day off after all. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Besides, I can't even remember the fur the last time I went out with someone, let alone a date. Yeah, maybe going on a date with him wouldn't be such a bad idea. Besides, Ren didn't seem that bad of a guy. I could even use this as an opportunity to get to know him better. He certainly seemed interesting. Sure, why not? Sound like it'd be fun. And I haven't visited the pier in a while. Y you really want to go on a date? I, I mean, yeah, cool. Would it be alright if I pick you up around 11 then? Yeah, sure. Wow, he really seemed eager. I hope I didn't make the wrong choice by agreeing to this. Uh, uh, Alright then, yeah, great! He was perhaps a bit too eager. It's his first date in a while, okay? Uh, anyways, it's getting late now, isn't it? I'm sure I've already taken up too much of your time. I'll, I'll let you go to sleep then. How will you respond? Chat, what are we saying here? But I wanted to talk with you more. Can we talk again tomorrow? Okay then, good night. And the good old stares. <laughs> Chat is a romantic. Time to drown at the pier. Why can't stalkers all at least be hot? Being stalked, sus, but why are stalkers always ugly AF? Because the hot guys are stalking you, you just don't notice. Because they're hot. That's that's why. I'm seeing a lot of ones. But I wanted to talk with you more. Uh, 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 really? M me too. But you need to sleep, don't you? I won't be greedy. Can I... Er, would it be okay if I called you tomorrow? Sure. We could talk more about our date then. Uh, okay, yeah, sweet. I mean... Why did I make that noise? What noise are you talking about? Uh, I'll just... I'll let you go to sleep before I embarrass myself further. Good night, chat. Sweet dreams. Placing my phone on the nightstand, I begin to sleep in, slip into my bed and pull the covers over my body. A beat passes before Ren's soft, breathy voice enters my mind. Breathy voice? What is he? Does he talk like this? Hey. <sighs> Hi. That. Oh. Is that how he talks? Hmm. <clears throat> you moaned into the mic super loud, Clock. Well, that's what he did. He did... Uh, uh, uh. That's what he did. Before saying, uh, yeah. That's what the, the guy did. I'm just doing what the game told me to say. A beat passes before Ren's soft, breathy voice enters my mind, and I slowly find myself getting lulled to sleep with it. <laughs> what, uh, what is your guy's deal, bro? It told me to say that. So, Ren, huh? I wonder what you have planned for us tomorrow. I just got here and I hear moans. It's the game! End of day one. The next day will soon begin, so make sure to save now if you need to. Oh, okay. Okay, chat. Tell me now, do you want me to go back? Do you want me to go back and choose the other options for day one? Or do that all once we're done all three days of the demo? Clock's too much into the game. Clock, moan again, please. I'm concerned. Sup? Yes? Keep go keep playing or yes? <clears throat> keep playing after day three. Okay. 
Do it once we're done. Okay. You'll have to live with that because I'm pretty sure the sex scene was on day one. So. <clears throat> Waking up to the sounds of birds chirping outside and the sunlight filtering through my blinds, I groggily rub my eyes before absentmindedly staring at the ceiling for a few moments. A lot had occurred last night, and I still needed to process most of it. But the main thing that plagued my mind was the date I had planned today with Ren, the guy I had met at the library yesterday. <laughs> Looks like YouTube's not getting it. Stay till the end of the video, ch YouTube. Reaching over my nightstand to grab my phone, I casually checked the time, only to realize that I still had a few more hours to kill. Not only that, but I also apparently received a text message from Moth at some point last night. At a glance, it appeared as though they were just ranting about the newest update for Always With You Again, though I hadn't read the la latest chapter yet to know all the details. Nevertheless, I read through the wall of text and memes with avid curiosity, and even sent back a few of my own. <laughs> Before I knew it, hours seemed to pass by in a blur. Yeah, I thought it was really strange that chat wanted me to not go back for the sex scene, but I guess they're actually interested in this psycho freak. Psycho killer. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Uh, glancing back at the time on my phone once more, I noticed that it went from being 8 o'clock to half past 10. Half past 10? My date with Ren was supposed to be in half an hour. I quickly let Moth know that I had to dip from the conversation before throwing my phone onto the mattress and sprinting towards the bathroom. But just as I grab a fresh towel and a change of clothes from my wardrobe, my phone buzzes once more. Assuming it was yet another text from Moth, I pick it up and put in my passcode. But what awaited me was a message from none other than Ren. Hmm. Hi, hi. Good morning, Angel. I hope I didn't wake her you up. Wake. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to confirm whether or not you were still on for our date today. Wait a second. This is how I type. This is how I text people. <laughs> no, no. Am I? Am I a freak? Am I a psycho killer? Oh no. <laughs> this is how I fucking type. Oh no, dude. <laughs> because we can meet up at the beach walk if you are. It's not. Oh, wait, did I miss a line? Oh yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to confirm whether or not you were still on for a date today. Because we can meet up at the beach walk if you are. It's not far from this new cafe I want to check out. Oh no! <laughs> I use this like constantly, the smiley. <laughs> Ren's messages brought a smile to my face for some reason. And I assumed it was because he seemed just as enthusiastic as I was for today. I sent back my own affirmative text alongside a smiling Haruko sticker before going back to my bathroom and getting ready for the day. Please do never say that again. Please never say that again. It won't happen like that. In the end, I did end up meeting Ren halfway th via the boardwalk. We decided to walk to his to this recently opened cafe together for lunch. <clears throat> it wasn't far from my apartment anyway, and I figured I could do with a bit of exercise. <clears throat> Turning to my side, I noticed how the pink-haired man tries to not so subtly sneak side glances towards me. The arm at his side practically itches to reach out. If I knew any better, I would have assumed he wanted to hold my hand. Instead, he simply tucks his hand into his pockets and shoots me yet another soft smile. The weather's really nice today, huh? Shut. Back to small talk, it seems. Sure is. If I'd known it'd be this nice and sunny, I would have suggested spending the day at the beach instead. I yeah? Yeah, we could go for a swim or maybe even check out the rock, pot rock pools. It's been a while since I've been there. Uh oh, that does sound fun. Chat! At the sound of my name being called, look at that immediate anger in his face, by the way. <sighs> Bro is still wearing this fucking Hawaiian shirt combo, fucking tucked in to his fucking belt, which is literally above the belly button. Bro's coming from Hawaii out of the fucking 60s, dude. Next thing you know, he's gonna have a phone, uh, he's gonna have his phone, and it'll be, instead of in his pocket, it'll be here, strapped to his belt. At the sound of my name being called, I turn on my heels, only to find Leon running up to me with a sports bag full of what I assume to be his volleyball gear. What do you need for volleyball, bro? What, what gear do you need for volleyball? What, just the ball? What, you got a bag of balls? What, you got the net with you? Hmm. <clears throat> Heyo, sunfish. It's good to see you out and about this early. 
I was just on my way to the beach to meet up with Jaehyun and Tio. Wanna tag along? And hey, who's this? I don't think we met before, mate. Name's Leon. Chat's bestest friend in the whole wild world, yeah? Oh, you're dead. Sorry, Leon, you're dead. You're you're gonna be dead soon. You're murdered. You just basically got yourself killed. It's over. It's Jover, Leon. I playfully roll my eyes at Leon's words and give him a slow, little reluctant nod. Keep telling yourself that. But this is my friend Ren. We actually met... Sunfish? Huh? Oh, yeah. Sunfish is the cheesy nickname Leon gave me when we were kids. I don't really get it either, to be honest. It's Ogre. <laughs> Rest in peace. Ugh. So, Sunfish and Ren, was it? Nice to meet ya. I hope we can get along and become good friends, too. Actually, hey, if you're both free right now, why don't we go down to the beach? I can introduce you to Jay and... <laughs> he, he had to change the nickname. He changed the nickname. He had to... <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Angelfish and I were about to go on a date, actually. Angelfish? A date? I don't miss the way Ren suddenly pulls my arm closer to his side, nor the way he clings onto me as though I'd suddenly disappear. You're going on dates again, Darl? Good for you. I'm glad to see that you're coming out of your shell again. Take good care of them for me, won't you, bud? What do you think I've been doing ever since you moved away? What? Wait, what? What was that little comment? How do you know him? Like me, Leon barely seems to notice Ren's mumbling as he rests an arm over my shoulder and starts tugging me in the direction of the beach. Ren, on the other hand, still latches onto my arm, but doesn't seem to move. I can't believe my little sunfish is out there in the dating scene again. I feel like a proud father. <laughs> I feel like he's Australian, right? I feel like he's like Australian, but I, I don't know. Oh, please. We're basically the same age. I feel like a proud adoptive father. Leon pretends to wipe a tear away from his eyes as he leans further into my shoulder. And it was only then that I noticed Ren wasn't following us. Turning around, I reach out to grab his hand instead to tug him along. He immediately seems to perk up at the action and entwines his fingers with mine before falling into step. <laughs> Leon's fucking... He's pissed, dude. He's black? Um, bean slug? You think so? I guess we'll know if he drops it, right? Stalking us since we were kids? Yes, I think so. 100%. I get, he got the seal of approval from Bean Slug, and that's pretty much confirmed. Hmm. Alright, as fun as it is to catch up with my proud adoptive father, who's the same age as me, which makes things kind of weird, Ren and I do need to get going. Oh, yeah, of course. I didn't mean to take wow. so much of your time. He unhooks his arm from around my shoulder and inclines his head towards the beach one more time. But my offer still stands. If you want to catch up some more, I'll be down at the beach with... Hey, yo! Tio! Oi! Fucking oi! I'm, I'm built different! King of Chad! <laughs> he just pops in. He's, he's fucking massive, dude! This guy's from Hawaii, dude. Or he's a white guy. But either way... He's got all the fucking tribal tattoos, dude. Oi. He's brick. Whoa! Whoa! Chat, what do you mean you're bricked? Speak of the devil. Much like Jay. Teodore. Teodore was another friend I made in university. But if I was being honest here, I don't think he was actually enrolled in anything. He just showed up every so often to keep his attendance rate up and to antagonize some of the students and staff. As if reading my mind, Tio practically runs into Ren with the sole purpose of sending him tumbling into the metal railing behind him. <laughs> but luckily, Ren manages to catch- I mean, he's just as big as he is, actually. He's- he's actually taller, I think. He's actually taller than him. Damn, but his neck ain't as thick, dude. Look at that neck! That is thick! <laughs> okay. Um, but luckily, Ren manages to catch his footing at the last second, sending Tio an annoyed scowl of his own. Oh shit, sorry about that. I'm not sure how I missed such a brightly colored children's mascot. <laughs> Alright, there's no need for that here. Despite Leon's tone, 
Tio barely pays the shorter male any mind, seemingly far more interested in Ren instead. Let me guess. You're dressed up as Benny the Buttercup? My four-year-old cousin would love you. Oi, knock it off, mate. Oi, knock it off, mate. <laughs> okay, I guess, I guess, I guess he is fucking Australian. There's no shot he just said that he's not Australian. Oh, no. My Australian. I can't do accents. Oh, no. Well, you guys are here for cringe now. Because I'm going to try. What's your problem? Don't know. What's yours? I could practically feel the tension between the two grow, so I decided to step in. Uh, maybe you should introduce each other first before you try glaring each other to death? Tia, this is Ren. He's my, well, I'm their boyfriend? Well, that was certainly one way to put it, especially without discussing it with me beforehand and asking for my input. Okay, chat, come on, you gotta let this guy have something here. You're going on a date with him, okay, chat? Like, you gotta give him that much. You gotta let him stand up for him. What is he supposed to say? I'm just some guy they just met? Nah, this is a bro down, okay? You gotta, you gotta have something to put up. Have <laughs> Ren shut the... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> At his words, I shoot Ren a confused glance, but the determined look on his face had me biting back my words. Uh, okay then. Anyways, this is Tio. He is... How will you respond? Oh, shit. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, shit. Well, chat, what are we saying? Is he a friend from university? Is he your ex? Is he... Was he just a fling? And I've never seen this man in my life. <laughs> Wait, what? This is Tio. Fling? Tio's a fling? Cotton candy ramen head looking motherfucker. <laughs> True. I got a four, a two, a three, a two, a one, and a one. So we're tied on two and one. Ex-boyfriend. Oh, that's two. Okay, so I think two is winning. One X. We don't. We want problems. Two. Eleven. There's no eleven. One. <laughs> we want drama. Two, two. I think I'm seeing two. Don't repeat. Don't repeat, motherfuckers. Don't. <laughs> Four is the problem, though. I'm seeing two, so we're saying ex-boyfriend, I guess. I think it's ex-boyfriend? Maybe one, actually. Maybe it's one. This is what polls are for? Okay, I'll hold a, a short poll. You poll. Okay. Uh, one minute. You got one minute to make the boat. Go, 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 go! Go, chat, go, 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 go. <clears throat> Vote now. Or forever hold your peace. I'm hydrating right now, chat. What are you doing? <sighs> by the way, Penguin, thanks for all the cheers, by the way. I forgot to say it earlier. Okay, I see a lot for two, my ex-boyfriend. Drama! I think, I think number two is gonna win this. Ooh, can I get a stretch check? Uh, yes, you can! Uh, mm. uh, where's the poll? It should be at the top of your chat. You don't have to scroll up. It should just be there. S Stream has been a bit wild, huh? Hasn't it, chat? Stretching is good when you've been sitting for a while. Okay. He's my ex-boyfriend wins. We did a save, so we'll come back to it, okay? <laughs> yeah. I don't like to date people outside of my tax bracket. Don't get it twisted, doll. We were never exclusive. I never even brought up the concept of dating when I was with you. <laughs> oh, wow, dude. Okay, never mind. He just doesn't give a fuck. Oh, that explains why you were fine with cheating on me. Wait, what? I thought you guys were just friends. What an asshole. Look, it's not cheating if I was never your boyfriend. Alright, why don't we change the subject? I'm sorry, you weren't my boyfriend? Then why would you ask me not to see other people? You think I'd want to share you with others and let them have what's mine? 
before I can step forward and knock some sense into that idiot, Ren seems to beat me to it. He grabs the other male by the collar of his shirt, but Tio only looks on with a lazy smirk. What's your problem? Okay, enough. Look, why don't we just drop the issue? You really need to stop trying to pick fights with everyone, Might. Oh, don't get your panties in a twist. I seriously doubt Buttercup's capable of harming a fly, let alone able to throw a decent punch. Yo, if this guy can throw half of his weight into a punch, it doesn't matter. Dude, this guy's taller than you. His his body weight alone is going to send you... Like, even with, like... Nah. Height and, like, weight plays so much into, into your punches. Like, it's crazy. Tio's an asshole, by the way. Fuck this dude. Ren, beat, kill him. Murder, murder. Now, go, dog, go. Attack. You can drop the nickname. Nah, but I think Dollface over here should drop you instead. Besides, the nickname is kind of cute. Matches your style pretty well, don't you think, Buttercup? I could see Ren's hand clench into a fist as he advances towards Tio, but thankfully, Leon steps in once more. Seriously, why don't we all cool off, yeah? I think we're getting a bit too heated. Look, we're gonna head down to the beach. I don't miss the way Leon sta sends Tio a sharp glare. Are you sure you don't want to join us, chat? I promise to make sure that Tio stays on his best behavior. Sorry, Leo, but I've already made plans with Ren. Yeah, the femboy with the painted nails and the pit cotton candy hair? He's with me. The femboy is mine. <laughs> And I seriously doubt they'll be able to get along. You know how Tio can get. Look at his fucking... He's pissed. <laughs> yeah, you've got a point there. Well, alright then. He leans closer to me, as, almost as if he didn't want the other two eavesdropping. If anything happens, I'll be in the area. Just come find me, okay? <laughs> I will, thanks, Leon. I give his arm a soft squeeze and turn my attention back to Ren. But by the time he looks at us, I can only assume that he didn't like how close I was standing to my childhood friend. Though, that could have also been because Tio was still around, and honestly, I couldn't blame him. Regardless, I reach for his hand once more and tug him towards the cafe, making a point of ignoring Tio's crass words as we went along. <laughs> what a dick! Fucking pissing contest with this dude. I barely notice how Ren's mood immediately changes when my attention is back on him, and he follows along like a lost puppy. Good dog. <laughs> Excuse me, chat? What are you- what are you saying? <laughs> Kiss your homies goodnight? True. It's not gay if it's with homies? True. Uh, if you wear socks, it's not gay? Good dog? Yes, he's the dog. We eventually arrive at the Driftwood Cafe, and the smell of fresh pastries and brewed coffee flood my senses as it, wa as it wafts through the open airs. He's, he's a goddamn poodle, chat, okay? He's all bark, no bite. Just as I thought, the cafe looked as though it had only recently opened, though it didn't seem as busy or crowded as I anticipated. I may be wearing the choker, but he's wearing the leash. He's got the collar and leash combo, okay? Pulling me from my- Jeffrey boxing match when? boxing match. I don't think it's happening. Wait, Ren versus Jeffrey? <laughs> I don't think Jeffrey stands a chat. <laughs> chat, I don't think Jeffrey stands a chance. Pulling me from my thoughts, Ren ushers me into one of the empty tables before he goes off to make an order with a pleased look on his face. Yo, can we get a hydrate? Can we get a hydrate check and a posture check? <laughs> Good stuff. It was a bit strange how he didn't want to look at the menu first, but I chalked it up to him wanting to surprise me. He's barely gone for five minutes before he returns once more, taking a seat in front of me with a huff. Huff! Huh. Huff! A, si a comfortable silence washes over us, and I watch as he absentmindedly fiddles with the ends of his hair. Was he still concerned about what Tio said about his parents earlier? Maybe it'd be a good idea to take his mind off of it. Hey, chat? Or, hey, Ren? Almost immediately, he perks up with wide eyes. How do you manage to keep your hair so fluffy? It always looks so good. Ren seems to flush instantly at my words, and he sheepishly ducks his head lower to hide his reddening cheeks. Do you like it? I, uh, I usually just angle a blow dryer below my chin and blast the heat. It just stays like that afterwards. 
Oh, so you don't need to use any products or anything? N not really. Just when I thought he got over his timid personality, he slowly came crawling back. Was this really who he was? Ren must have taken my silence as a lack of response, seeing as he tries striking up another conversation. So, uh, work's going good for you, huh? Finally got that promotion? Ah, uh, yeah, I did. I was honestly surprised when I first got my promotion, considering how I've only moved back here recently. But, Eleanor has been really helpful by showing me the ropes and... Wait, how did you know I got promoted? Uh, oh, y your co-worker told me all about it yesterday after you left. Eleanor, right? She seemed really proud of you. Uh, anyways, what are you saying about her showing you the ropes? I barely noticed how he managed to change the conversation back to me, as I recounted all the times Eleanor helped me through my first week of working at the library. It eventually reached the point where it felt like I had been talking for hours, and it was some wasn't some until something caught my eye did I finally stop. How will you respond? Okay, chat. What are we saying to him? Oh, look at the cute puppy, and then points at him. That goth style is pretty cool. You've got something in your hair. Sorry, what were you saying? Well, uh, chat already knows what I was going to say. Who's looking at him disrespectfully? Ren should end himself disrespectfully. What does that even mean, dude? Pole? No pole. This one's quick. Two ones. I'm seeing three ones. Two fours. Okay, I'm, go I'm going with one. I see a lot of ones. Oh, look at that cute puppy. He's the puppy. I see a lot of ones. We got to do one. Hmm? Ren glances out the window and follows my line of sight where a small Pomeranian sat, idling, chewing the laces of its owner's shoes. Haha, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that is a pretty dog, but I think you're cuter. Nothing could compare to- you. Order 25! Oh, that's us. Wait right here. I'll be right back. Before I could get a word in, Ren was jumping out of his seat and meandering his way towards the kiosk. It really was a sight to behold, seeing Ren tower over most of the other customers who were waiting in line. Even the cashier herself, who seemed to be at least six feet tall, had to crane her neck upwards just to look at him. Excuse me? How tall is this man if he's... Excuse me? But before I could blink twice, Ren was already on his way back with a large tray full of delicious food. He seats himself back in his original spot with a pleased smile and begins to lay out the dishes in front of me. What? How tall is he, man? If they had to look- if a six foot person has to crane their neck to look up at you. This isn't just like a little bit of like looking up. This is like- what is he? 6'5? Six, 6'6? Six, six? What is he? What is he gonna die when he's 30 years old? Like what the fuck? Bro's tall. Bro's a lanky motherfucker. Oh, this is... How will you respond? A sugary cookie, a big slice of cake, a chocolate croissant, or a delicious looking scone. Chat, what you want for dessert? Come on. Let me know, chat. Let me know. Come on. Cake! Cake! Big slice of ass. <laughs> I think it's three. I think it's cake. Big slice of cake. What's your favorite cake, chat? YouTube, you too. What's your cake? Let me know in the comments below. I'll rate it 1 to 10. A generous slice of cake sits next to my beverage, and I almost hear my stomach rumble at the sight. Let them eat cake! How did Ren know that this was my favorite thing to order? Granted, it wasn't like I've been to the Driftwood Cafe before, but this was usually what I'd order at any other cafe. Got the cheesecake, we got the chocolate cake, the double choco fudge cake! It was honestly like he could read my mind. What was even more mind-boggling was that he didn't even need to look at the menu beforehand. I mean, if it's like a dessert cafe, they got cake, bro. Black Forest Cake, W Nuts. How about Beanslug, you get these nuts in your face. It was like he just knew. <gasps> Happy. Don't forget your drink. Ren shoots me another gentle smile of his before placing my drink before me. No way. The drink placed in front of me, it was... How will you respond? Cup of coffee, a steaming latte, a can of soda, a fruity smoothie. What is best cake flavor? Smoothie, smoothie, cafe, one, smoothie, smoothie, smoothie. Okay, I'm seeing the smoothies. Honestly, if I went to a cafe and they had a smoothie, that'd be pretty badass. I'm going with smoothie, chat. 
The inviting aroma of fruit floods my senses, and that alone was what assured me that Ren ordered my favorite smoothie. Just like the ones I usually bring on my way to work sometimes. Stalker vibes. I, I hope this is okay. I, unfortunately, this cafe doesn't really have much to offer, judging from the menu I saw online. Ah, so that's how he knew what to order. I even tried asking for napkins earlier, but I don't think they heard me. M maybe I should try again? I almost felt bad for him, but I also felt grateful for ordering me something that I'd normally eat at a cafe. Ren makes sure that everything is on the table before putting the tray aside, and it was then when I noticed that what he'd ordered himself. On his plate sat a strawberry sweet roll, alongside a cup of coffee that was an alarming shade of black. What, it, what do you mean? You mean black coffee? What, what is... How is that alarming? It's just black coffee. Strawberry sweet roll? <sighs> that sounds good. He seems to pick up, my, pick up on my inquisitive stare, if the innocent tilt of his head was anything to go by. Do you want my meal instead? We can swap if you want. I, I don't mind. This is supposed to be a date, right? Deciding to tease him a little, I shoot Ren a sly grin. That's okay, but you could offer me a bite instead. Ren almost seemed to combust on the spot. Y hey, yo! Did he just... Uh, I lost! Did he just lose right here and now? Did he just... Did he just pop his cherry? Did he just... Are his pants wet? As his cheeks turn red, and he almost chokes on his own spit. Ah! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looks down at his food before glancing back at me, only to look down once more to scoop up a bite-sized piece of his food. Extra nut on your cake, ma'am? I watch as Ren's cheeks turn a deep shade of red when he brings his fork closer to me, and not wanting to be seen as a coward, I lean in to take a bite. <laughs> he lost no nut November before it even started, bro. It's over. Uh, his eyes widen almost immediately, and he seems hyper-focused on the way my mouth wraps around the fork before I lick my lips and let out a pleased hum. Mmm. Mmm. It's yummy. Try some. Chat, stop whoring yourself out, okay? God, chat. Ugh. The pink-haired man seems to have another, an awkwardly long staring contest with his own fork before scooping up yet another small piece and taking a bite. Ren's cheeks are still scarlet red, and he seems almost fidgety with how his leg keeps bouncing under the table, so I decide to take pity on him and not tease him for it. With a knowing smile, I start digging into my own meal with a pleased hum. Chat, you're scaring me. Pineapple cake. Is that a thing? <laughs> you versus Ren in a gunfight. I <laughs> Why? Nah, I'm good. Eventually, we ended up finishing our meals and decided to do a bit of window shopping to pass the time. <laughs> Wish we had coffee to throw it at Ren. <laughs> it's, is it that bad? Is he that <laughs> creepy? Because he is pretty creepy, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I had nothing else to do today, and Ren seemed insistent on spending the rest of his time with me, so I agreed. Passed by a few clothing stores, ice cream stands, surf, surf bird, surfboard rentals, and many other interesting buildings, though nothing really caught my eye. But just as I thought I'd lost all hope, one store in particular catches my eye. In one of the display windows, I spotted this cute little rabbit plushie in the style of Haruko's likeness. I mean, it even came with his limited edition sorcerer outfit and everything. <laughs> I'm glad to know that chat and me are still nerds in this world. I couldn't believe they were selling these things here, of all places, and at such a cheap price, too. <laughs> the, the store cashier pops in. Ren seems to notice that I was not so subtly gawking at, but before we can enter the store, the cashier walks in front of the display stand and blocks our view. She drops a box of mis miscellaneous items at her feet, begins stocking the shelf next to the plushies, before she finally notices us standing by the window. I don't miss the way her eyes widen at Ren, obviously taking an immediate liking to him and almost shamelessly pushing a strand of her hair before, behind her ears before giving him a small wave? What the fuck? Do you not see I'm standing next to him? What the fuck? The, dude, are you flirting with my boyfriend that he decided on today? That's fucked up. 
Sneaking a glance at the taller man beside me, I noticed how Ren wasn't even paying any attention to her, instead keeping himself busy by scratching at his jaw and kicking at the stray cobblestone rocks by his feet. <laughs> He's like, nah, no attention, I'll just look away, awkwardly. But the cashier seemed adamant about getting Ren's attention, considering how she felt the need to abandon her spot by the shelves and make her way towards us? Bitch! Uh, hi there, welcome to Seaside Trinkets, my name is Olivia. Can I help you with anything? Oh no, we're just looking around, but thanks for- We recently got some new beachwear merch if you're interested in checking them out. Was she seriously ignoring me? Oh, you look kind of like someone I know. Have we met before? Maybe we went to the same school. Oh. Oof. But m me? Uh, I don't think so. Really? I definitely would have remembered a face like yours. Actually, now that I've got a good look at you, I watch as she shamelessly takes in Ren's appearance before crossing her arms over her chest and leaning back. You also remind me of one of those characters from a cartoon that's been gaining a ton of traction here. Apparently, one of the locations from that show is based on Corlin Bay's main beach. Are you talking about Attack on Giant? Is that the name of it? Then yeah. I don't really know much about those cartoons, but our company recently started selling some stuff for it to entice the tourists. Do you want to come inside and take a look? Ren doesn't seem to answer her question and instead casts an inquisitive glance in my direction. It was like he was asking for my opinion, and I can only assume it was because he knew about my interest in anime. I mean, he could also just be like, I don't want to control where we go on our date. Like, he could just- this is just a nice guy thing to do. Like, like you probably shouldn't just go into a store because some random lady asked you to. Get with Olivia, she's hot. I don't know if you've noticed, chat, but this isn't us, okay, chat? You're, like, invisible over here, and Olivia? Olivia wants to suck Ren's dick, not yours, okay? I'm sorry to say. But she's not interested in us. So we got to put the Riz on her. It was thoughtful of him to do that, but I, want, I kind of wanted to tell, tell that rude worker off instead. Wait, did I really want him to do that? What was wrong with me? I'm sure that the cashier just took an interest in him, and there was nothing wrong with that. It's not like we were a couple anyway, but we were supposed to be on a date right now, and Ren did declare himself as my boyfriend earlier. But I just assumed he said that in order to get Tio off my back. Does that mean... Was he feeling the same way as me? Was jealousy on his mind when we walked with Leon and Tio earlier? I wasn't sure how I felt about this new discovery. Chat? Huh? Do you want to go look at the items? We're, we've still got a bit of time to kill. Here, why don't I just show you the most recent stock? We haven't shown this to the general public yet, but I'm sure you'll love it. Without warning, Olivia, was was that her name? Reaches out for Ren's arm and practically drags him inside the store. He lets out a surprise sound before leaning back and trying to grab hold of my own arm as well. But I was just out of reach. Ah! That's the surprise sound. There was nothing else I could do but watch as Ren helplessly gets pulled into the store. Bitch. It's back here in the stock rooms. Usually, it's back here in the stock rooms. Usually we don't allow customers downstairs, but you're a real hottie, so I'll let you take a sneak peek. No, I, I actually, I'm good. Don't worry, we won't get caught. I'm sure your partner won't mind if I borrow you for a bit. Oh, hey, yo, what are you gonna do? Suck his dick down there? What the fuck? The winks she sends him would have made anyone feel uncomfortable, and had Renz turned around, I would have seen the pissed off look on his face. But instead, he leans in close to her face and whispers in a hushed tone that I could barely hear from my spot outside the store. <sighs> if they weren't standing there right now, I would have shoved your desperate ass down the staircase without a second thought. And right now, it's really fucking tempting. What? From their current position, it looked as though they were having a really intimate conversation. I felt the sudden urge to look away. Holy shit. Olivia, stop. For your own safety. This is not the man to get with. Oh my god. Why was I getting so bothered over this? I know we aren't exactly together, but Ren shouldn't be off flirting with other people on a date with someone else. He's trying so hard. He's trying so hard. Besides, this was exactly the type of thing Tio would do to me when we were dating. Go around shamelessly flirting with other people, sometimes while I was in the very same room. What made it worse was that he'd simply laugh it off by saying that he was just messing around, and that I shouldn't get be getting so worked up. I honestly couldn't believe that Ren was doing the same thing to me right now. But still, there was this nagging voice at the back of my head that kept telling me not to give up on him so easily. 
Ren was the one who confidently stood his ground when Tio got a bit suggestive, so maybe I should do the same. Would he even mind? Before I can stop myself, my feet start to move on autopilot as I march towards the two of them and reach for Ren's sleeve. I give it a hesitant tug, and I swear I can almost feel the relief wash over his body because of it. Ren's entire demeanor seemed to change in that moment. He turned to me with a relieved smile and his soft features. I don't really have any interest in this store. Can we go somewhere else? Y yeah, of course. W wait, hold on. Oh my god, this guy just threatened to murder you, and you're still like... Please stay with me, Uwu. Ren carelessly shoves Olivia's outstretched hand aside and gently places an arm over my shoulder instead. And just like that, he's already guiding me out of the store and back onto the busy street. I can hear Olivia sputter out confused sounds as she watches the two of us leave, and I suddenly feel guilty for causing a rift between them. This is a stranger! Don't feel guilty! What? Olivia needs to chill. She's into that sort of thing, I guess. I want to see the staircase scene play out. <laughs> Me too. Honestly, I wish it was an option. No matter how many times I try to brush it aside, I still can get my mind off of what had just occurred earlier. What if, what if Ren was interested in her? Granted, he probably shouldn't have blatantly flirted with her on while on a date with me, but he wasn't exactly the most confident guy. Would he still be able to talk to her again if things didn't work out between us? No, I shouldn't be thinking like that. Peering up to gauge his expression, I noticed how he didn't really look all that upset about leaving her. If anything, he seemed rather content to be walking down the street with his fingers entwined with mine once more. I can feel him give my hand a protective squeeze as he looks down at me with his soft blue eyes, and all my worries somehow melt away. Bang, Olivia. <laughs> what? <laughs> she loves the color red? Excuse me? <laughs> she wants to see it on herself, apparently. Maybe I did make the right choice after all. Might have been selfish, but it was worth having Ren look at me with such a gentle expression. <laughs> Eventually, the sun starts to set behind the ocean as Ren and I continue to walk along the beach walk. Most of the conversation was geared towards me and my interests again, but every time I tried to learn more about Ren, he only seemed to divert the conversation back to me once more. But the more I focused on this odd behavior, the more I began to pick up on his social habits as well. I learned that Ren would subtly pick it at the sleeves of his cart again whenever he got nervous, or he'd scratch at his jaw whenever the conversation strayed down a path he didn't feel comfortable with. His little quirks told me about himself than, told me more about himself than the dead end conversations that only led back to me. I was con I was content with knowing more about him than I did yesterday. Ren no longer felt like a stranger I had met at a library, but rather someone I could consider a friend. Except, friends aren't supposed to get jealous whenever they see them flirt with someone else. Jeez, what was wrong with me? I mean, we this is a date, so it's not... Why are you thinking of him as a friend? <laughs> so weird. Jeez, what was wrong with me? It's barely been two days, and I was already contemplating whether or not I truly saw Ren in a romantic light. Do you? You accepted a date! You called him! Chat, what is your deal? Why are you so airy? Why are you so floaty, chat? Make up your mind, chat, okay? Let's get a good suck in. <laughs> <sighs> was I going too fast? All of these thoughts were starting to get a bit overwhelming, and... Angel? Hello? Huh? I thought I was Angel Fish. <laughs> You're spacing out on me again. Yo, chill with the hydrates! Oh, posture check? I'll do that. You motherfuckers better be drinking your water bottles. There's that look again. Is sparkling water... No. Never. He keeps peering down at me with such so much adoration in his eyes, and if I didn't know any better, I would think that he was already halfway in love with me. But that was a very conceited thought. It probably wasn't even true. So, sorry, I was just thinking about us. Are you going to share those things with the rest of the class? It sends me a playful smile and a gentle nudge into my side. I couldn't help but laugh. When did, we, when did we become so comfortable with each other? And when did he lose his stutter? It's nothing, really. Maybe a bit embarrassing, but... Well, I was wondering. How do you feel about... My sentence gets cut short when a drop of rain lands on my cheek. Instinctively, I look up and find myself wondering how I didn't notice the dark clouds in the sky sooner. Oh, rain. 
that's the best, actually. Honestly, the best, walking in the rain. All of a sudden, more droplets fall down, until it's all but pouring rain and forcing everyone in the area to find cover. Over here! Ren doesn't seem to pay much attention when he grabs me by the hand, pulls me underneath one of the awnings of a nearby building, shields me from the rain from his body, with his body, and I couldn't help but feel tiny with the way his arms cage me in as he rests them against the wall. He's gonna look like a drowned rat. <laughs> True. <laughs> dot dot dots. We look at each other in silence for a brief moment before erupting in laughter. Perhaps it was because of the adrenaline from all the panic, panicked running, or the fact that Ren's hair was starting to lose its fluffiness, but I couldn't hold back from letting out a fit of giggles. This only seems to spur on Ren, spur Ren on as well, until we're both wheezing out our lungs and gulping down air. I <sighs> can't remember the last time I ran that fast. But me too. The looming sound of thunder echoes from afar and drowns out our laughter until we're both silent once more. Once we both calm down, Ren moves me away from the rain before casting a glance behind him. Wait here, I'll buy us an umbrella so we can get out of this rain. But you'll get soaked. Haha, <laughs> tis a sacrifice I'm willing to make. I roll my eyes at his corny jokes and send him off with an amused smile. Clock, I'm a freak. I like walking in the fog. That's nor that's normal. That's cool. That's Silent Hill. He doesn't look back before he makes a mad dash out into the rain, down the street towards the closest convenience store. Oh. Though the rain only seems to get heavier the moment he leaves, I find myself pressing even further against the wall behind me to avoid the recoil of the rain bouncing off the pavement. There wasn't much for me to do while I waited for Ren to return, aside from watching people scramble around for shelter. Just like that, the carefree sounds of laughter echoing down from the street capture my attention as I watch Leon, Tio, and Jay all run to cover like their life dependent on it. Well, it seems as though their beach outing got cut short as well. They were at the beach! They were probably wearing like fucking t-shirt, like shirtless and swim trunks. What does it matter if it's raining? Glancing back once more, I barely make it out of the f I make out the figure of Leon using his bag as a makeshift umbrella as he ducks under one of the awnings of an ice cream stand. All while Tio and Jay trailed behind at a leisurely pace, kicking and splashing water at each other in the rain. I had to look away the moment Tio started to remove his shirt, and I had an inkling that it was so that he could show off. <laughs> and knowing Jay Hyun, he followed along like a mindless grunt, because that's what he always does when it came to his friends. Part of me felt like calling out to the group to see if I could wait out the storm alongside them, but they all seemed to be enjoying themselves, and I didn't want to get in between that. They're gonna go have homie sex. Plus, I did promise Ren that I'd wait for him here. Even if he was taking his sweet time. Who <laughs> rude! Was he ever gonna return? There was still no sign of him or his comfy looking cardigan. I was beginning to wonder if he really did ditch me. <laughs> he just fucking left. He's just like, I'll be back when it's done raining! <laughs> See you in a half an hour! <laughs> After all, it must have been more than 15 minutes! Okay, that's actually concerning. What if he got caught up with something, or what if he went back to see that cashier lady again? Her store did happen to be on the same street, but after spending the afternoon with Ren and getting to know him, I concluded that he wasn't the type of person to do such a thing. He's having a quickie with her. Right now. He's a player. But if he was, then that would only add insult to injury, considering how Tio had done the same to me multiple times in the past. Although if I was being honest with myself, it did seem as though he, they had chemistry. Especially with how she looked at him and touched his arm as though it was the most natural thing in the world. What am I? What are you, chat? Chat, are you a are you a sit in the corner and likes to watch kind of person, chat? She apparently knew him as well, or at least he looked recognizable enough. Why did that thought make my blood boil? Thankfully, the rain was there to cool me off, as well as soak the ends of my outfit and make everything feel damp and uncomfortable. Oh, was Ren really coming back? Shouldn't take this long to buy an umbrella. How will you respond? Okay. Chat, what do we do? Are we gonna walk home or are we gonna wait for him? Tell me. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. <laughs> I do understand. Leave his ass, wait, wait, walk. Ditch his ass, walk home, wait, walk, walk, wait. I gotta I gotta put a poll for this one. I gotta put a poll. 
Okay, new pole. What do? One, two. Okay, chat, pull is up. Vote now or forever hold your peace. Are we gonna ditch his ass or are we gonna walk? Are we gonna ditch him or wait for him? I got a lot of votes for just ditch his ass. <laughs> I bang Olivia, not gonna lie. Uh, Hungary, I feel like you're you're literally going for anything that walks at this point. Who waits that long for anyone in the rain, though? <laughs> okay, I think Chad has decided. I think we're going to. I think we're gonna walk home alone. Okay. <laughs> Damn. This is stupid. Forget it. It doesn't really matter what he was doing. Ren shouldn't have taken over 20 minutes to buy an umbrella. Brother ran home to grab his umbrella. That was just ridiculous. Besides, it was getting cold and the wind was starting to pick up. If I stay out here any longer, I'll probably get swept away. Violet's flower shop should be nearby. Maybe I could wait out the storm there. I mean, it was only a few blocks away and she did tell me about the spare key under one of the flower pots in case of an emergency. This was kind of an emergency, right? Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, I don't. I think she'd understand. Just as I psyched myself up to sprint towards the next overhanging roof across the street, a cold hand wraps around my wrist and scares the absolute shit out of me. Yanking back, I instinctively turn around in panic before meeting Ren's worried blue eyes. Ah! Angel, where are you going? You shouldn't be running anywhere in this weather. Motherfucker, you waited that- You made me wait! Jeez, Ren, what took you so long? almost wanted to cuss him out for taking well over 20 minutes just to buy a single umbrella. The genuinely apologetic look on his features made me hold my tongue. Sorry, I ran into your friends from earlier, which took forever for me to shake them off. And then the convenience store ended up closing early due to the sudden weather change, and so then I had to go to that awful souvenir shop with that obnoxious and clingy cashier again, and he was talking a mile a minute, and I was worried he'd end up biting his tongue. Gently, I raise a hand to signal him to calm down, and his intense monologue soon comes to a halt. He had a quickie with the uh, Olivia. I'm really sorry about making you wait so long, but... Ta-da! I did manage to get an umbrella, among other things as well. <laughs> he gives it a small twirl in his hand, sending droplets of water all over the place. We can start heading back home now if you want. Unless you want to go somewhere specific. How will you respond? Okay. Chat, where are we going? Go to my apartment. We can go to his apartment. Where do you want to go? Forget it. I'm going home alone. I'm sure I'm going to need to run a poll for this one. So. One, two, three, four. Okay, chat. Poll's up. Let me know, chat. What do you want to do? Hmm. Leave his ass alone. I feel like four will kill us again. Yeah, I feel like four I'll die. I kind of want to click four just to see what'll happen. Just to see. <laughs> just to see what'll happen. <laughs> Murder me, daddy. Show me your big strong knife. I'd rather die than spend more time with him, though. Damn. Damn. What happened? Nothing. It's kind of neck and neck, two and four. <laughs> Breach! Savage. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, it's kind of concerning because um, aside from the stalker vibes, this guy, I, I pretty much act like him. Rather listen to Patrick Bateman music, Rampage, than Ren. Number two, one, okay, with seven votes. Okay. I don't think we're going to get to go to his house, but we're, I'm, well, that's what we'll say. Did I save? I did save, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. We can go to your apartment. M my apartment? Sure, it's not that far away. We could wait out the storm there if you'd like. I even have a heater and dryer we could use. The image of me sitting in front of a warm, cozy heater was too hard to resist. So I end up eagerly stepping under Ren's umbrella while he leads the way. Never mind. We are the psycho. Now let's murder him. Despite the heavy downpour of rain, we managed to make it to Ren's apartment complex in one piece. One piece! 
The One Piece is real! Okay, sorry, I got it out of my system. I guess he really wasn't lying when he said his apartment wasn't far from mine. But judging from the pristine interior and fully functioning elevator, his building seemed to be in far better shape to compared to my apartment. Hey chat, can we get much higher? Is that what, I think that's what we're going to see soon. <laughs> the elevator ride could have been a little less awkward though, if it weren't for the slow ascend and tacky music. Or for the fact that Ren deemed it appropriate to shake his hair like a wet dog and get water droplets everywhere. Once the elevator doors slid open, I was immediately met with a grandiose corridor and large, spacious doors, and I found myself wondering how much it costs to live in a place like this. Don't look too hard at my how messy my place is, okay? I wasn't expecting to have someone over today, so I didn't bother cleaning up. Haha, <laughs> I'm sure it's not as bad as my place, or the entire apartment I live in for that matter. Uh, oh, that bad, huh? Maybe you could live with me instead. Sorry, did you say something? Uh, no, no. I mean, well, I was just thinking. It's a bit strange, but no one lives on this floor aside from me. I'm not really sure why, but I'm not going to complain. I can make as much noise as I want, and no one would notice. Ren shoots me a mischievous grin, and I find myself wondering what he meant by that. Like, loud music and stuff? Movies? Yeah, something like that. Like all the raw dogging we're going to do soon. <laughs> he. He unlocks the door with some electronic card attached to his keychain, and the moment the door swings open, I let out an audible gasp. <gasps> Ren doesn't seem phased in the slightest as he flicks on the lights and walks into his home, but I can only stand at the entrance to his foyer in shock. Yes, foyer. He had a whole damn foyer in his apartment. Sorry, foyer. <laughs> Was this even an apartment? Surely a penthouse would have made more sense. <laughs> no one will hear you going down the stairs. Oh, no. <laughs> Holy shit, Ren. Is there something wrong? What is it? I know the decor is kind of tacky, but it came with the apartment, and I haven't found the time to do anything about it yet. I'm sorry, but are you the long-lost heir of a billionaire or something? This place is huge. And, oh my god, is that marble? <laughs> no, I just, I get paid a lot for my job. Enough to forward rent, at least. You know, I don't think I've asked you this yet, but what exactly is your job? Holy shit, you're a dick if you didn't ask. Uh, my job is, uh, I, I guess you could say I'm a programmer? I, I don't know. I just take on a few jobs every so often. Nothing super fancy or anything. Makes sense. Makes sense. Nothing super fancy? Ren, you have marble flooring. Leaving the newly discovered programmer at the entrance, I curiously venture further into his apartment. Marvel's a pain in the ass to clean, too. Oh, Angel, d do you want some slippers? The floor can get cold and your shoes are probably soaked, right? Why do you live here, bro? Turning around, I notice Ren opening a small closet and pulling on a pair of dark house slippers. He looks at me with a curious expression, but makes no effort to hand them over. Only if you want them. I'll take them, but only because they might be douchey. Douchey. <laughs> douchey. Douchey. Yeah, douchey. Ren lets out a puff of laughter through his nose at my joke, but doesn't seem to deny it. As I put them on, I noticed how they were in my exact size, and it made me wonder if he had bought a bunch of expensive house slippers in various sizing. Yes. <laughs> but as funny as that imagery was, how did Ren accurately guess my shoe size without seeing my feet? <laughs> oh no. He is a feet enjoyer. He is a filthy footman. Oh no. Oh no, dude. Oh no, he's been staring at our feet the entire time. Oh no, dude, he knows. He knows just by looking at him. Oh, red flags. Oh no, dude. Oh no, he he wants us to take off our socks as soon as possible. He's got the foot fetish. He's got the foot fetish for sure, chat. For sure. This man wants to lick my foot. Licks your foot. He's gonna suck a toe. But <laughs> as funny as the imagery was, how did Ren accurately gra grasp my shoe size without seeing my feet? Here, why don't I show you to the bathroom? I'll find you something to wear in the meantime while your clothes are in the dryer. Or would you prefer a towel? S sorry, I don't usually invite people over. Seeing his timid sign resurface once more gave me the sudden urge to tease him. How will you respond? Oh my god, how many saves are we going to have? There's still another day, dude. Okay, chat, what are we going to say? 
Ren is such a loser. <laughs> Did they do the spicy stuff, guys? No. Rob him. Guys, just a towel? Is it Egyptian cotton? Don't you have any friends? Am I your first house guest? I guess this one's not that important. But... I'm seeing a four. I'm seeing a three. <laughs> I'm seeing three a couple times. I'm seeing three a lot. Don't you? Have, let's be mean. Yeah, tell him he has no friends. Yeah, yeah, we'll be mean. <laughs> what? I, I do. I, I think. Though, to be fair, I haven't invited any of them to my place yet. But they don't exactly live in Corland Bay in the first place. Uh, what? Wh what? N no, nothing. Never mind. Uh, anyways. Uh, he's a gamer. He's an online gamer. I'll show you the bathroom. You can use whatever you want in there. Nothing is off limits. First it was offering to spend the night at my place. Then it was asserting himself as my boyfriend in front of my friends. He really doesn't care about personal boundaries, huh? <laughs> I mean, you're standing there soaking wet. I thought he was just being nice. I was beginning to think that Rendon's really seemed to mind when it came to me invading his personal bubble as well. Though he still seemed pretty standoffish around Tio and Leon. It took him a while to warm up to Eleanor back in the library. But it, chalk, I chalk, but it chalked it all up to him being his usual shy and eccentric self. Speaking of shy, I still noticed how Ren didn't seem to be switching up his personality as much anymore. I was beginning to think that he was showing me his real side. Up until now, everything felt real and genuine, and I found that we could bounce back witty retorts between each other more easily. Though, every now and again he might slip up and stutter, but I just assumed it was because my teasing made him flustered. So, maybe the timid side of him was genuine after all. But I'll leave some clothes for you outside, and put the plushie I bought for you in your room. Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, thanks. Great, I was zoning out again and completely missed half of what he was saying. Something about clothes and a plushie he bought? Was he talking about the Haruko plushie I was eyeing up earlier? I mean, he was carrying a gift bag from that souvenir shop earlier. Did he really buy me that toy? Yes, Giga Chad. Ren, however, doesn't seem to pick up on my confusion, though, and invitingly opens the bathroom door for me with a, small, a soft smile. And so, without trying to make things awkward, I quickly slip inside and lean against the door for support, which was fortunate for me because one sweep of the bathroom had me stumbling back in surprise. <coughs> Whoa. Even his restroom looked expensive. I was afraid of touching anything, fearing I'd accidentally break and end up paying for it. <laughs> Excuse me, what? Jump out a window? I'd rather be a bum than murdered? Okay then. Alright, good to know. Glancing around again, I notice how his countertop seems to be void of any dental care, hairbrushes, and skincare products, though a few bottles of concealer and an open box of hair dye sat in the corner near the sink. Well, I guess that answers my burning question on whether or not he naturally had pink hair. Fuck! Dump him. <laughs> But now it made me wonder, if Ren does dye his hair, then what was his natural hair color? <laughs> Wait a second! Chat? Ch <laughs> chat, how stupid were you? <laughs> nah. No, chat. I can't believe you're that stupid. Do you actually think he had naturally pink hair, chat? You think people just have cotton candy hair, chat? God fucking damn it, dude. There's still so many things I didn't know about that soft-looking guy. I was beginning to question whether coming here or not was a good idea. It's a wig. He dies for... <laughs> he dies. Okay. With a sigh, I decided not to waste any more time thinking about irrelevant things and instead turn my attention back to the shower. <laughs> Nacho dip out the stream. Yo, see ya, bean slug. Yeah, his Pokemon ass, dude. Quickly strip it out of my clothes, I jump into the unnecessary large glass booth and turn the water on. This is a glass bathtub? Nah, I'm not getting in it. That's crazy. That's insane. No way. Glancing at Ren's shelf of albeit limited hair products, couldn't help but notice that one brand in particular just so happened to be the exact same as mine. Did we use the same shampoo? Didn't really smell like me, but maybe that was because I wasn't paying much attention. I mean, who randomly smells people out of the blue anyways? <laughs> <coughs> 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 Oh, wow, I felt like I was getting called out there or something. Taking my head at such a silly notion, I begin to scrub away the lingering smell of rain from my body, quickly finish washing up. He definitely is. He's definitely, like, hugged up against this wall right now, like, heavily breathing. 
Bundled up in a warm towel, I crack open the large door and poke my head out into the hallway. I do not, actually. <laughs> but I do kind of have a sensitive nose. Like, I do... Sometimes I pick up on some smells. True to his word, Renz left a small pile of clothing outside the bathroom, neatly stacked and propped up against the side of the wall. He's in the walls? He's in the glass bath with me already? Bring the contents back inside. I noticed that one piece of clothing in particular was a rather comfy looking hoodie. Nice! But the design on the front, however, was rather morbid looking and didn't really suit Ren's vibes. Maybe from a horror film or something? Eh... Dude, that's badass, okay? Shrugging my shoulders, I put the hoodie on and instantly get enveloped by the sheer amount of fabric. Dude, that's badass! I love... Dude, black hoodie with like some like fucking crazy ass horror movie shit on it? That's badass. Better be a pullover too. I mean, it made sense considering Ren's large and lanky frame, but this was just absurd. I had to stifle a laugh from the amusing sight in the fogged up mirror, but I had to admit that the soft fabric felt nice and warm against my skin. <laughs> Free hoodie, it's mine now. Even the scent that came from it felt oddly comforting somehow. Turning back to the remaining clothes in the pile, I gently pick up the next item and try to put it back on. The gray sweatpants didn't seem to fit the length of my legs, despite the number of times I tried to roll up the elastic. But eventually, Ren was thoughtful enough to give me other alternatives. The dark pair of shorts seemed like the better option, especially since it came with a drawstring and deep sh pockets. His shorts are probably like khakis on me, so it's fine. Once I was fully dressed, I step out of the bathroom and aimlessly walk around until I hear the faint sounds of a TV playing. Feeling curious, I follow the sound source of the sound down to the hallway. Eking news! A sudden storm hits the bay as gale force winds and... <laughs> Knock over street signs and even even awnings. Just believe that this su sudden change in weather will die down soon and to stay safe indoor. Continue to follow the noise until it suddenly cuts out and changes into a glaring monotone sound, in it indicating that the television must have lost all signal. Motherfuckers running satellite. What an idiot. Hmm. Soon enough, I found myself in Ren's spacious lounge room. Aside from the TV, the rest of the lights were off but I could still make out most of the dark shapes within the room with ease. It was just as ostentatious as the rest of the house, though I couldn't help but feel like it lacked any form of life. It just didn't seem like someone actually lived here. The furniture was gaudy, yet tasteless. There was hardly any personal decoration or colors. There was nothing that really screamed Ren to me. There were no personal touches, photos, items, hobbies, nothing. Just tacky furniture and the bland smell of something sterile. <laughs> Patrick Bateman? He planned the storm? Man changed the weather just for you, Chad? If I was being honest, it gave off the same vibe as a dentist's clinic or a hospital. Maybe he recently moved in? I think he did say that. Excuse me? Who moved in? Excuse me? You're wearing a crop top long sleeve? With a giant v-neck? Hey, yo, bro, please? And he's got like a little heart tattoo on his fucking upper crotch. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Surprised by the sudden voice, I spin on my heel only to find Ren coming out of one of the hallways with a new set of comfy clothing. Dude, imagine how awkward that be with your tattoo artist. Just be like, yeah, right above my dick. Yeah, bro. <laughs> oh, no, man. You seem much more at ease like this, especially with the gentle expression on his face. <laughs> this is fucked up, dude. The how much did he pay his artist, okay? I watch as he takes a respectful glance at my attire before sheepishly averting his attention to the ends of his sleeve. Okay, you can- they make big and tall clothes, okay? They make t clothes for tall guys. It, it happens. He may be like 6'5", but they make clothes for them. Sorry, that's the smallest pair of clothing I own. It looks really good on you, though. Oh, thanks. You can even keep them if you want. The sound of thunder rumbling in the distance cuts off Ren Ren's mumbling, and I involuntarily step closer to him. Uh, without missing a beat, he reaches out and rests a protective hand on my shoulder to steady me. Hey. <laughs> Ren idly glances out of the window before turning his undivided attention back to me once more, only this time with a determined look. Hey. <laughs> it's really pouring, huh? I could only nod my head at his words, suddenly feeling sheepish all of a sudden. I really should have checked the weather forecast before I went out today. But to be fair, it didn't look as though it'd start spontaneously raining when I left my apartment this morning. 
And I guess I was enjoying my time with Ren to the point where I didn't even realize the weather was turning sour. Angel? Sorry, what did you say? Uh, I just asked if you wanted to stay the night here, you know, seeing how hard it's raining out there and your clothes haven't finished drying yet. It'd be no trouble, I really wouldn't mind at all, but only if you wanna, of course. Staying at this place for the night? Well, this certainly isn't how I expected to end my day, but would it really be that bad? It definitely beats waiting out the storm and walking home with a bunch of puddles everywhere. How will you respond? Uh... <clears> hmm. <throat> Gary can't even read, bro. Chat, can you read? Two? It's the same option, chat. Bruh. Spend the night on Glitched. Everyone's like picking options. Motherfuckers, these are the same options. <laughs> I'm gonna pick the Glitched one. Spend the night. What was that? Did I really want to stay the night at Ren's place? Guess I did. Couldn't really remember otherwise. I guess I could stay the night, if that's really okay with you. This <laughs> one is slightly resisting. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's totally fine. Wow, he really wasn't an energetic, eccentric man, wasn't he? Really pale, too. Where needs to go? Oh! Hey, what's that room over there? Uh, let me know if you need any more pillows or blankets. Or, if the room gets too cold, I haven't worked out how to use the fancy heater system yet, but I can definitely try. Also, you know where the bathroom is, but if you... Okay, I think I got it, Ren. Shoot him a reassuring smile as I turn to face him at the door. Should have gotten used to his attentive and observant behavior by now, but it still felt like a foreign side of him that I hadn't fully uncovered. Still, at least he wasn't stuttering as much anymore. <laughs> I know, sorry. I just want you to be as comfortable as possible, so just treat this house like it's your own. Alright, gotcha. He looks like he doesn't want to leave and instead lingers in front of the door a little while longer. Are you sure there isn't anything else you need? Anything at all? How will you respond? Can I get a good night kiss? <laughs> Excuse me, chat? What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay, well, I guess I'll put up- What's behind the locked door? I mean, chat, come on. What's behind the locked door? Four? No, I'm good, thank you. I gotta put up a poll for this. New poll. What do? Okay. Vote vote away. I really wanna... I, I'm biased. I wanna see... But I wanna ask him what's behind that locked door. What's behind that locked door, bro? Was back there. Was hiding there, dude. Was what's in there? I want to know. Oh God! This shrine is behind the locked door, and I want to see it. Oh my God! True. I was. That's why I, I didn't think he'd let us over to his house. He's totally got like a room full of like pictures of us, like stalking pictures, right? He's got the full wall of stalker pictures for sure. Hmm, I think that one wins today. I think we I think it won. Okay, we're gonna pick three. We'll come back, okay? We'll come back to the other options. <laughs> Wanking station. Hiding the bodies. Oh no. A woman is better than a femboy. Hey man. Hey man, that's just your opinion, okay? That's just your your preference. And it might be wrong, but I'm not gonna say that, okay? <laughs> What's behind that locked door, motherfucker? <laughs> motherfucker! The the locked door. <laughs> what door? Oh, you mean the one at the end of the hallway? All of a sudden, his timid persona is back again. Was he just nervous? What could he possibly be hiding in that room to make him act like this? He's so bricked up, he's like covering his dick. The, there's n nothing in particular, just... Uh, uh, I'm currently using it as a storage room for all the furniture for my old place. It, it's really messy in there. I'd be embarrassed if you saw what's behind that door. Oh, yeah, okay. That actually makes a lot of sense. No, it doesn't. Great. Now I'm the person who throws accusations at someone kind enough to offer me a place to stay for the night. Still, it was nice to know that he did own some kind of furniture. Sorry, sorry. I guess I was just really curious about it. Usually people don't leave the lights on behind locked doors. 
Oh, y yeah. I'd be happy to show you what's behind that door when it's not so cluttered. But if that's all, then I guess I'll just let you get some sleep. If you need anything, my room is just three doors down. Gotcha. Good night, Ren. Good night, chat. Sweet dreams. I watch in silence as Ren turns on his heel and makes his way towards his own room down the hall. Shaking my head at his odd behavior, I close the door behind me and slowly make my way towards the bed. I noticed that the Haruko plushie Ren had bought earlier was sitting atop the sheets. I gently bring it closer to my chest to give it a soft squeeze. So he really did buy this for me after all. The faintest hint of cherry and mint emits from the toy makes my mind drift to thoughts of that strange pink haired man once more. He was still as odd as usual, but some parts of him were starting to feel rather endearing. I noticed how he was no longer stuttering as much or acting as shy. It made me wonder if we were getting close. Closer. Now that I really thought about it, how did I feel about Ren? How will you respond? Okay, chat. Chat, what are we choosing? What's up with the ja ja jaz? But I'm asking for answers. I'm crushing on him. I think I like him. I think he's all right. He kind of creepy, though. He kind of creepy, though. I think I see a lot of fours. I see a lot of fours, actually. Four is dominating, true. Let's pick four, okay? He kind of creepy. Was th What was there to say? He still had that flippant personality of his going on, and he somehow knew all my favorite things without asking me. Sounded like a grade-A creep to me, but I didn't have any solid proof to back up my theory. But I guess I shouldn't be calling him a creep when I was the one who willingly agreed to go to his apartment, despite only knowing him for two whole days. There's also that break-in that Violet mentioned yesterday, but Ren didn't fit their description at all. Ah, uh, well. I shouldn't be concerning myself over this. Still had that new lock installed, so I doubt they'd want to come back. Rolling onto my side, I push those thoughts at us aside as I hug the plushie closer and slowly drift off to sleep. End of day two! The next day will begin soon, so make sure to save if you need to. Hmm, <clears throat> okay, so... Oh, sure. Okay, chat, day three. So this is the last day of the demo. So I guess we'll keep going. He's the gym teacher's femboy's son. He failed German four times. Jesus. Why would you keep taking it, bro? Hmm. <laughs> Bruh. Why would you keep taking German at that point? Pick a new language. After day, we're going to get the spicy stuff. True. We're going to go back for all the spicy options very soon. The unusual sounds of city life and traffic pulled me away from my slumber, and I wake up to the sight of an unfamiliar ceiling. This wasn't my bedroom? This certainly wasn't my bed. Was I drugged? Excuse me? Last I checked, my duvets were a patent purple, a housewarming gift from Violet when I first moved into my apartment, not this dark shade of black. Yo, Violet is awesome? Wait a second, Violet is... Violet's the one? Violet's my one true love? Confused, I rub the sleep from my eyes in order to fully take in the rest of the room. Just like that, memories from yesterday come, come flooding back. Oh, right. Ren offered to let me stay the night due to the freak storm that swept over Corland Bay. It was sweet of him to do, and had me wondering where he was right now. Was he still fast asleep? Or perhaps he was already awake? Deciding there's no time like the present to find out, I jump out the knots in my body and wake myself up fully and 